my deadbeat father got the surprise of his life when he learned out this family secret. Why do things that start out sweet end up sour? My mother, my brother, and I are currently at our grandparents' house where my father's being reprimanded by them for maltreating mom. Things were not always like this between them, see. As a matter of fact, my mother would always tell my brother and I after she must have been beaten up by dad that there was a time he was head over heels in love with her. And you wonder why she would spend time talking to her little children about the issue that sensitive, huh? Just know that it's because she had no other person. She was in fact an orphan. Dad and mom had met when mom came looking for a job at the family firm. Dad's family is into oil and the gas business and they have various gas plants scattered through the city. Dad picked interest in mom that very first day that he set his eyes on her, well, because of her beauty. A beauty that was gradually fading because of the constant beatings which he usually gave her. My grandparents had initially taken the matter lightly by occasionally calling their son to order and all, but from the way Grandpa's voice was raised, it was clear that he meant business this time around. And this is because my mother's life was almost snuffed out by my dad. While she was running from him during the last beating session, she tripped and fell, thereby fracturing her hip. This has now permanently affected her movement for life. Granddad warned my father that it was the last time that such a fraction should incur, otherwise he would personally deal with him as though he was not his son. Granddad noted that the business was currently facing crisis as competition was growing, and it meant less revenue, and so he would rather spend time worrying over productive ways just to grow the business, rather than waste time playing judge between my parents. Unlike my father, Grandpa had enough sense to know that Mom could sue his son and it would affect the family business greatly. Grandpa compensated my mother by deciding to take care of her and I, and my brother's schooling. This meant that my mother did not really have to work as she did before. What's up guys, Mr. Redito here, so this is a very unique story. The OP of the story wrote it in a diary format. There's about seven or eight pieces to it, so let's go ahead and jump into the next section. I hope you guys are having a great day. Here is section number two. Hey, um, it's been a few months since my granddad reprimanded my father, and I could say that my father has actually straightened out. We've not seen him argue with mom, much less lay a finger on her ever since. As a matter of fact, he acted nice towards my mom and us. The surprising part of the whole thing is that he began frequenting the firm to help around, something he rarely ever did. Everyone was glad that my father was now the best version he'd ever been. Grandfather threw a party last night to celebrate the company's win and honor my father for making it all possible. It was really shocking to hear that Granddad hosted a party to honor his son, who has never really been too involved in the family business except until recently. But I guess that my dad was deserving of the party. My dad had apparently come up with the various innovations and ideas that could lead to the expansion of our firm, and I guess you could say save the day. One of the such was the establishment of several gas plants outside of the city, and the countryside where local folks could easily access the product. This would save the cost and risk of transporting gas from city to countryside, and would also provide profitables along the run. There were occasions in times past where there was accidents during the conveyance of our product to the countryside, and those kinds of accidents usually involved the loss of life. The company would then have to spend millions in settling for the families, so they weren't dragged to court. My father's idea was really going to save the day. My dad took it upon himself to find a good spot where the major gas plants would be suited, and there was little competition. My grandfather welcomed the idea with open hands. So much, in fact, he gave the go-ahead to start the project ASAP. A project which my father was going to manage and supervise. The project was going to cost millions of dollars, though it would really just initiate to slow down the activities of the company. It would yield a massive turnaround in the future. The party which was held was more like a groundbreaking party. My dad showed up with Irene, the consultant who hired to work alongside him. I don't know if consults have a dress code or not. <laughs> I can't really say. 
but this Irene consultant looked more like a hooker than she did a contractor. Well, what do I know? So long as she was going to get the job done right, then I have no reason to complain. My grandfather paraded my dad that day as his only son and heir. I could see the pride in his face when he told everyone that his son, which virtually everyone knew to be a never-do-well, was actually the brain behind the giant step which the company's about to leap into. The night ended with my father giving a speech of thanks to my granddad for trusting him, and equally pledging his allegiance to forever seek the good of the company. I'm glad my father's indeed stepping up to responsibilities. Post number three. Hey, uh, it's been two months since I wrote in this thing. I last posted, and it's because there's been a quite a series of drama that's occurred in the family that I have no time to really write about. My father's currently nowhere to be seen, and though an official police request had been lodged, we cannot really say if he was kidnapped or he just ran away. It's most likely that he ran away from the house after the supposed project was kick-started. My granddad soon got a call one afternoon, that my father had attempted taking his own life. As expected, there was panic everywhere. My grandfather sent some people to go and get him, and he was brought home sobbing like a child while saying that he was better off dead. My father's body was covered in blood. He tried to cut his wrist open so that he could just go that way. Upon inquiry, it turned out that he had scammed by the contractor, which was supposed to handle the whole project. As soon as the total amount of the entire project was paid in full to the contractor's account, my father found it difficult reaching out to her. Her mobile phone number was no longer going through. Disconnected. And when my father visited the place where she said she lived, he was told that she moved out a while ago. And that's when it dawned on him that he had been gotten. Millions of dollars were thrown down into the drain just like that. Irene, the contractor, which looked like a hooker to me, was actually a scam artist all along. The implication of the loss was massive. The story had actually made headlines the next day, and the company that had made the boast of taking such giant steps to success had begun sinking like a ship. Granddad was more broken than everyone else. The company had parted with over 50% of its capital just to fund my father's expansion idea. Well... It turned out to be a failure. Such a loss would take the company years of consistent profit to recover. And with the level of competition going on, the likelihood was not much. Grandpa, surprisingly, did not let the whole thing weigh him down. Even though mockers and competitors took good advantage of the situation, he even encouraged Dad to not be hard on himself. I cannot tell if Dad took the advice or not, but it's been three weeks since we last saw or heard from him. What's up guys, Mr. Redito, so this next update is about to take a wild change. OP is going ahead and skipping 15 years ahead in the timeline. With the update starting out, 15 long years have passed since my last update. Well, I'm now a big girl who's getting ready for marriage. After the financial setback with the company had suffered and failure to find my father, my grandfather suffered a stroke that caused him to remain on a wheelchair, which the doctor said that he was going to use for the rest of his life. My grandmother had to support him, and this affected everybody, especially those who were beneficiaries of my father's wealth. Yeah, my granddad was a philanthropist, my mother had to resume working so as to support my younger brother, and I in schooling. She felt it insensitive to still let my grandfather shoulder all the financial responsibilities, which our schooling <laughs> demanded just alone. Seeing that firm was not doing so well, and granddad was not as strong as he ever was, I can call my mother my own superhero, as she was having issues with her joints, still took the pain of working just to make sure I finished college in flying colors. This is not to say that I've never had distractions, of the contraire. I was deceived in my early days in college by a guy who I fell in love with. Yeah. I never knew he was just after sleeping with me. Two months after, well, he did sleep with me, I discovered that I was pregnant. I was shocked when the guy who said he loved me more than life suddenly warned me to stay far, far away from him. I was not willing to bear the shame, and neither was I going to forgive myself if mother collapsed out of a heartbreak because of an unwanted pregnancy. 
So I went the only option which was at my disposal, abortion. After the abortion, though, I decided that I was going to focus on my studies as guys were just simply not worth it. I came out of college a chemical engineer, and I immediately started seeking for jobs. I did not want to ask my grandfather if it were possible to get one in the family company, as most of the staff were laid off for the years. My search for job landed me in the premise of our rival in the oil business. I submitted my application, and while I was awaiting their response, my granddad decided to place me in the managerial position of the firm, as he was not as strong to run the affairs. A few weeks after I was running the family business, the rival company reached out to me. They were apparently pleased with my academic qualifications and wanted me to work for them. I turned them down as I've already gotten a job. But Ferdinand, the son of the CEO, picked an interest in me and asked me out. Uh, we began dating. Though I did not have much expectation from that relationship, Ferdinand proposed to me a few weeks after we met. And though every lady in my shoes would have said yes right away, I told him no. My main reason for declining was not really because his father's company was rival of mine, but because I wasn't really sure if he meant to spend the rest of the life with me or not. After pressing me, I decided to put him to the test. I called him two weeks after the first time we were together, and I told him I was pregnant. It was a lie, but I needed to see his reaction and how ready he was to shoulder responsibilities. Uh, Ferdinand was glad and wanted meeting with my people to facilitate a wedding ASAP. I knew that he was the man for me. I accepted his marriage proposal after telling him the pregnancy was feigned. I'd introduced him to my mother and brother and they both loved him. But I was skeptical to introduce him to Granddad because he was the son of his business rival. All the same, I knew there was no way I could get married without getting my Granddad involved, so I finally took Ferdinand to meet with him. To my surprise, though, Grandfather welcomed him as though the rival business never existed. We would be getting married next month, and the next time I ride in this thing will be my status as a single lady would have been updated to a married woman. Next chapter. Well, it's official, I am Miss. I got married last week and I'm currently preparing to go on a honeymoon with my husband. Much to the displeasure of my grandparents. Yeah, you heard that right. My grandfather in particular is against me going for the honeymoon. And it's not because he wants me to go work or he's against my marriage. Oh no, the contraire, just like I noted. He'd welcome my husband Ferdinand with open arms, even though he was the son of our biggest competitor. Granddad even covered the expenses of the wedding as a show of good gesture. The reason my granddad wanted me to postpone my honeymoon was because of my father. Yeah, my father came back, and he made his little grand entrance. He gatecrashed my wedding. Things were going on really well on my wedding day. We'd been joined as husband and wife, and were simply having the reception party when Dad waltzed in. It's been 15 years since we last saw him, but there was really no much difference. He was clean shaven and it didn't look like he was suffering. Uh, I couldn't help myself, but I exclaimed, Dad? And that got the attention of folks shifted to my father. The wedding party ended rather quickly because my dad had come back to life. My grandparents broke down in tears as they saw my father for the first time in years. Well, my mother, my brother, and I remained unmoved. We were rather seeking answers as to why he disappeared out of our lives all these years ago. My father acknowledged that he was not kidnapped, or whatever the story was. He said that the shame of having the family's business in jeopardy was the reason he left. The trio of my mother, brother, and I were mad. How could he abandon us for over a decade for such a stupid reason? If shame had made him ghost his wife and kids, then why was he returning now when the company still suffering from his mistake? The three of us made it clear that we did not want him in our lives. As a matter of fact, we no longer needed him for anything. My grandparents, uh, on the other hand, were just too excited and over the moon to see their son. They readily forgot the besides the fact that the family business has yet to recover from the financial loss because of father. Granddad, who suffered a stroke as a result of his disappearance, was on a wheelchair where he would remain the rest of his days. 
Grandfather began pushing to make us to become one big family again, but this was simply not going to happen. He fixed a family gathering that was to take place in a week's time and demanded that we were all present. The purpose of the gathering was for peace. The gathering meant that my honeymoon was going to be postponed. Well, I simply refused. My father's not worth it. For the first time in my life, I'm going to disappoint and disobey my granddad. I told my granddad of my unwillingness to stay back, but he threatened that anyone who was not around for the peacemaking would simply be sending a message that he or she was not part of the family. If you were in my shoes, what would you do? Would I go to there or should I just go to my own honeymoon? Post number six. Oh, it's been about seven months since I jotted in this thing, and we're all preparing to read my grandfather's will, which I guess contained error on his part, but you may not understand, except I'll start from where I left off. After Granddad had demanded that everyone be present for the family peace gathering, my husband, Ferdinand, talked to me in the back. He convinced me I should stay back. The meeting was basically Granddad trying to make everything dance to his tune through emotional blackmail. He claimed that he was not getting younger and would not want to die knowing that his family was not at peace with each other. Well, neither my mom, brother, or I argued with him because it was clear that he'd been so taken over by the return of his son that I believe it even affected his sound judgment. My granddad, after, quote, making peace, removed me from the managerial position and placed my father there. Now, I don't really have a problem with my father taking the seat of leadership because I know for a fact that it was supposed to be his under normal circumstances. Yeah, normal circumstances. This was not normal. My father had no knowledge of how to run the company. He'd been gone for over 15 years and only God knows what he's been doing throughout that time. But I'm certain that it had nothing to do with managing a firm. I went to share my thoughts with Granddad, but he rather rebuked me for trying to upsurp my very own father's position. But that was far from the truth. The family business under my leadership and management was beginning to take a little shape. But as soon as my father took over the reins of leadership, you could tell the difference everything just started going amiss. I fell out with my father one of the days when I could no longer stomach his repulsive attitude. Virtually everyone knew my father was just messing things up, but nobody had the guts to challenge him. The auditors had brought in the monthly report on the company's profit, loss, and expenditure, and it was clear that there was an abuse of funds happening. Yep, the data did not rhyme well at all. There was loopholes here and there. Loopholes that meant that some funds are unaccounted for. I was supposed to be the chief operating officer, and even though my father was the manager, he had to run certain things by me. But he did not. He acted just so because he knew that I was going to question certain things. After going through the report, I discovered that over $150,000 were not accounted for. I walked up to him. His secretary was not at the door to inform him of my presence. So I proceeded into the office without prior announcement. I was shocked to find out he was making out with his secretary. My father seriously had no shame. He was a dog. He always desired whatever was in skirts. They both separated as the secretary scrambled on the floor to pick her clothing up. Although I could not hide the look of disgust on my face, I ignored what I'd seen and proceeded to ask my father about the discovery I've made with the monthly report. He refused giving me an answer, relating the question that I asked. He rather reminded me that he was the acting manager of the family business and would not need the validation of his daughter, who was still his staff member, before making any moves that he saw befitting for the company. He actually threatened to fire me if I ever walked into his office like that again, or if I ever stood up to his questions or his actions. I left my father's office that day feeling angry than I had come. It really hurts so much to just stand by and watch everything been torn apart by dad. But there was nothing that I could do as I did not have the support of my grandfather. I had tried making him see reason, but he felt I was jealous and envious of my dad, who, according to him, needed more time to settle in. Well, the more time went by, the more losses were incurred. I only knew time was going to prove me right, 
And it did. A few weeks later, my family business began registering decline in sales and loss of clients. The success rate, which had not been high for the past 15 years, was beginning to drop lower and lower. To make matters worse, my father reverted back to his lifestyle of debauchery. It began to dawn on everyone that my granddad had made a huge mistake. My grandmother passed on around this time, and though she died of natural causes, her passing still affected dad. She was buried quietly, and my mother began taking care of my grandfather while my father ran the company down the drain, as he saw fit. A few weeks later, my granddad passed on as well, and as you should expect, my father began lording over everything. We're preparing to read his will, but my mother's getting ready to leave the house, because we all know that my father's going to be the successor of the family business and property, and he doesn't mean well for my mom and his children. I, for one, have resigned from the firm and joined my husband's at his father's company because I know that my father, who sees me as a stumbling block, would waste no time in getting me fired once Granddad's will was read. Confirming his inheritance, I would rather leave with my honor intact than give my father the privilege and satisfaction of firing me. Update number seven. I've been working in my father-in-law's firm for the past two months, and I'm already planning on resigning to go back, take the reins of leadership of my late grandfather's firm, and fire my dad. It sure feels good saying that. My granddad was laid to rest, and my father made a show of himself as heir during the burial ceremony. He gathered the big and mighty in what was supposed to be a funeral ceremony, could easily be mistaken for a celebration party meant to announce my dad's coronation. Though, my mother did her best to hide her pain. I knew that she was hurt seeing my father surround himself with younger girls, close to my age. Well, I never really expected him to parade an older lady who was limping as his wife. The burial ceremony soon ended and we all gathered at the family house, where father was housing his lover to hear the will being read. I was basically there out of respect to granddad. I'd arranged for my mother to temporarily move in with my husband and I till we found her a suitable house. Anyways, I'm glad that I was present to watch the whole drama unfold. I could not forget the look on my father's face when the lawyer pronounced that the family house, which he lived with his lover, was being given to my mom. He was clearly not happy, but he managed to keep his calm. He could not, though, keep his calm for long as the next news drove him mad. The lawyer announced that both the firm and the remaining properties owned by my family was now co-owned by my younger brother and I. I was to take charge of the company with immediate effect, and my brother was to join me once he was done with schooling. Oh, it can't be. It's a lie. Something's not right was all my father, who was visibly enraged, could be able to say, choking the lawyer by the throat. There was commotion everywhere as people around me to separate the lawyer from my father's grip. There was no such thing as foul play or error. My grandfather had righted his wrong shortly before he died. He knew that his son would mess the business up and drain it, and he called his lawyer to alter the will in favor of mother, brother, and I. I believe that it's a worthy compensation for all the beatings and negligence which we suffered over the years. My mother gave my father three months to get his belongings and move out of the house, or risk being thrown out and humiliated, which I think he did deserve anyways. Besides, three months by my estimation is too long to let him stay on in the house. I, on the other hand, have told my father never to show his face anywhere near the company for the rest of his miserable life. What's up guys, Mr. Redito here. So that actually took a huge change. I didn't see that coming in the inheritance. There was one final entry into the diary. It's titled update number seven. Well, it's been three months gone by since my mother asked my father to leave, but he didn't just leave the house, he was thrown in jail. Immediately after grandfather read as well, I took over the company and set up a security network around the firm to stop my dad from gaining access. As for the house where he was staying, he refused leaving and peace with the stupid claim that he was the first and only son of his father, and there's no way his father could have left him empty-handed. My mother ignored him while patiently waiting for the three months duration to be over so she could throw him out, but she decided to change her mind within the second month after my father took the case to court. 
My father wanted countering the will with my grandfather. Thankfully, his case did not hold any ground in court as it was quickly dismissed. As soon as my father lost in court, my mother involved the police, who came to eject my father straight out of the building. It was while they were trying to force him out that a lady showed up with two children. I could swear that the lady looked familiar, and while I was busy trying to recollect where I've seen her, my mother shouted her name in surprise. It was Irene, the contractor who stole all the money. The cops quickly seized her, as she had been wanted for over 15 years. My dad was reluctant to leave the building, suddenly attempted to run, and this prompted the cops to hold him back. Upon interrogation, it was discovered that Irene was my father's lover. He'd convinced her to act as a contractor so they could both siphon a huge amount of money from grandfather and simply run away. This was because he wanted just to get away from my mom, who my granddad had warned him he never to abuse again. My father and his lover agreed that she would go into hiding while he faked a suicide attempt just to get any form of suspicion off his back. The whole time when he cried and beat himself up was just an act that had worked swimmingly. He left the house to go and join his lover Irene, where she had been hiding all this while. It was while they were together that she had two children from him. As time went by, he knew that my grandfather was ill and had placed me in a managerial position. So he came back just to ensure he gets inheritance. He was supposed to secretly take care of Irene and her two kids, but ever since he left her, she had not heard from him once. It was during the flamboyant burial ceremony of Grandfather that was streamed across the city that she suspected my father was about playing her, as he had played us, and that was why she showed up with the kids. The revelation was a shocking one. I'm pretty sure that my grandfather would have given anything to return from the dead just to take his son back with him. The police whisked them both away swiftly, but my mother, my brother, and I decided that we're going to press charges. The company which our grandfather had left behind was suffering all because of my father's selfishness. The painful part was that there was no money to recover. My father and his lover owned no property anywhere. They just squandered the money. So we charged them for fraud, and we didn't need much evidence as we had the confession of Irene, my father's lover. My father was sentenced to life in prison, while Irene, his lover, had a reduced sentence to 50 years without parole. <laughs> and this was because she confessed the crime. When it dawned on my father that he was never going to be a free man again, he began crying and begging. And this time, I believed the tears were real. All the same, it did not move anybody. He deserved what he got. As for his kids, which happens to be my step-siblings, my mother took them under her wing. She would nurture them to grow into someone way better than their parents would have. The part of my father and his stupidity was dealt with, but there were still the after-effects of my father's actions that needed to swiftly be handled. The company was suffering. There was basically little or no financial power to sustain it, I thought long and hard, and my husband thankfully suggested a solution. He proposed it. A merger. A merger between his father's company and ours. The two companies merging as one, working side and side. It was the only logical solution that could save us. That way, there could be enough financial power and clientele, and we would surely grow, taking over the entire marketplace. I met with my father-in-law to discuss it, and though he welcomed the idea, he clearly stated that he was going to own 60% of the shares, while I and my brother would both own 20% each. After much deliberation, I accepted those terms. It was better than watching the whole business crash and burn, which my grandfather built with his bare hands. So far, the merger was proved the best decision. We're doing well while my father and his lover are both rotting in a jail cell. Well, good riddance. Bad rubbish. So this was such an intense story. It had me questioning if this story could even be real. I know, I know, some people in this crazy world do stuff way worse than what we've heard in this story, but I don't know. Something about it was just throwing red flags like, can this be real? I can't believe it, but at least those two crooked criminals are behind bars. Guys, let's talk about this in the comment section. Do you think this story was rubbish? Or do you think that it could have possibly happened? Drop your comments down below. Let's talk about it. 
Well, my mother, she's good for nothing. She goes and hangs out with all these degenerate friends. And get this, she decides to kick me out of her house in the middle of the night because I refuse to babysit her friend's kids so they could go out partying. Guys, I had to go to work in the morning. I can't just be out babysitting some random child. Well, the story gets a little deeper because I've actually babysat this kid before and she's growing up in one of the worst environments, so I did something against my mother and against her best friend. I called CPS and I let them know Child Protective Services needed to see this themselves because there's a baby being mistreated and I sang like a canary. People live like the consequences of their actions don't matter at all. I think that one should do things with others in mind. And I grew up with my mother who has never been married. The closest thing I have to a father is my grandpa, Bill. If you cross paths with him, you might mistake him to be an angry man who does not accommodate the weakness of others, but that is because of his foundation. Grandpa is a retired military chaplain who served all his life in the military. He wasn't coerced into getting into it, and the whole thing was something he had always desired, and so you have a man who's disciplined and somewhat religious in a sense. His wife had passed on at an early stage of their marriage, leaving the upbringing of my mother to him. Grandfather refused to remarry as it meant he would still need to bear more children, which he would need to be present to be trained. He had to send my mother to stay with his sister as he was not always around, and this was how my mother got exposed to lots of vices with nobody strong enough to straighten her up. My mother soon became very loose, and I'm the product of her promiscuous life. No man among the whole of them, which she slept with, admitted being responsible for the pregnancy. None of them wanted to be tied to a woman as loose as my mother, to be honest with you. Granddad got the news of my mother's pregnancy and he was greatly hurt. He was an army chaplain who preached against an immoral life and premarital sex. But his daughter had just gotten pregnant out of wedlock and most people would call him a hypocrite. He was displeased, but he did not disown my mother and call for her head. He knew lack of proper parenting may have played its part in my mother's immoral lifestyle. And so, he remained active in her life and did his best to lead her in the quote, way of God. As he always put it. He retired from service when my mom was supposed to be in college. College was not something my mother ever wanted. Her interests were nowhere close to books and she had gone through high school but would have dropped out earlier than that if not that she did not have a say as the time. My granddad took her and me to live with him, and he did his best to imbibe a little bit of moral sense into mother, but it was already too late. However, he vowed I would not follow the path which my mother had led, so he did to me what he should have done to her. He made me have a regimented lifestyle, and he created a routine for me, and these were filled with activities which he felt would, quote, bring me closer to God. My mother thought she was not restricted by her father as she was an adult at this time. She did not get the privacy to fully express herself, and so she told Grandpa she wanted to relocate to start a job. Grandpa was concerned, and his major concern was because of me. He knew his daughter had the, well propensity to not be a mother to me if she saw me as an obstacle to a reckless lifestyle. He suggested that she kept me with him, but my mother surprisingly said no. Granddad wished us well and asked that my mom brought me to him when she could. My mother and I both relocated and she did not disclose the location to my grandpa. She didn't want any surprise visits and she regulated the times I spoke with grandpa over the phone and the things that I said to him. My mother lived her life in a very discreet manner that I never knew what she was doing. It was in my high school final year that I discovered from my friend whose father was an Uber driver that my mother was an object to satisfy the lust of every man who came her way. My friend's dad had warned her to stay away from me, as the apple simply does not fall from the tree. It was then I began observing my mother very closely, and it turned out yes, it was true. I kept my findings to myself, though. 
I graduated from high school last year at the age of 17, but unlike my mother, I wanted to take my education a bit further. I enrolled for college, and I was given admission to study mass communication. I excitedly told my mother about it, and she seemed happy enough for me. She, however, told me that I would have to sit it out and wait the next year, as she was not financially capable at the moment. Her reason was good, and I tried to be understandable, and I suggested we talk to Grandpa about it. Perhaps he could be able to help us out, but my mother immediately frowned at the suggestion. She claimed Grandfather was a retired old man who had nothing but a scrappy pension to live on. I saw sense in what my mother said. She noted it was not fair to demand my granddad covered the cost of my schooling expense when he had barely enough to sustain himself. I changed my mind about talking to Granddad about it, and the plan was to sit at home and wait for the next year to arrive, so I could just enroll in school again, as I was not up to 18 and therefore not eligible to work. But my mother had plans of her own, it would seem. She calls me one weekend and asks that I go babysit her friend's kid, as she and her friend had night shift. This mom's friend is called Thelma. Thelma is not just my mother's friend, she's her colleague in the hookup business, if you know what I mean. She had given birth to a boy who was a year old, and just like my mother, there was nobody laying claim on the child. Birds of the same feather flocked together. I suspected they both wanted to go for one of their runs. I kept quiet and obediently went to her friend's place that day. It was my first time babysitting someone, and I did not enjoy it. Besides the whole baby diaper thing, Thelma was a very dirty lady. Every moment I stayed at her place made my body itch. I felt I was going to be the first and last time doing that, but my mother now made it a habit of sending me over to her friend's place on weekends. I was not happy, but I never complained. I just kept doing what my mother asked until this year when I turned 18. I was tired of staying at home doing nothing besides playing the nanny for my mother's friend. I suggested to my mother that rather than waste my time, I wanted to go spend my days at Grandpa's place pending when college would be offering admission. My mother did not welcome my idea. She said that I was just going to inconvenience Grandfather who did not have much and that I equally made her look like she could not train me once he finds out that I've skipped entering college last year because there was no money. I understood what my mother said, but it did not make sense to me this time around. You see, Granddad had never made it look like I was a burden to him, and I was sure he would love the fact that I had come to spend some days at his place. As regards to the college thing, I told my mom I would tell Granddad I had chosen to sit at home as I did not think I was ready for the college experience. But my mother refused. She suggested that I got a job since I was now 18, as it would make me not sit idly every day. Besides, it was going to be a source of income, too. I welcomed the idea, and I got a job at a factory. My job was in shifts. Sometimes I could work in the day where I'd close late. Sometimes it would be night shift. Something just disturbing happened one morning, though, when I was about to leave for work. My granddad, he called my mom and I overheard him ask how I was doing and all. I was in the kitchen doing the dishes while my mother spoke with grandfather, so I'm pretty sure about what I've heard. Grandfather asked how we were faring and if I had gotten into college, and I felt mom was going to tell him about the financial challenges she was facing, but to my amazement, she claimed I was in college and doing very well. Though I needed money to do several things, and I hear Granddad promised to send some money so I could sort out things which I needed money for. If Granddad lived on this scrappy pension, as Mother put it, where would he get the money to send for my needs? I confronted my mom the moment she ended the call, and I needed to know why she had lied to Granddad about my college and well-being. She was trying to get some money out of him, and I felt it was not fair. Since, you know, he lived on his scrappy pension, why was she now trying to take the little money that he had? What happened to the whole, it's insensitive to ask him for money? Well, that's the talk she had and that we talked about, and my mother did not bother defending herself. 
She just said she was doing what was best for the both of us and I was to be appreciative rather than seek answers that I would not understand. I left for work that morning feeling dissatisfied. The thought of hurting Granddad was something I could not bear and it ran contrary to the whole teachings that he's given me. I felt like a terrible disciple. I got home from work very late and I was so tired. It was on a weekend and my mother demanded that I went to her friend's place and babysit her child as they had a quote night shift again. This was the first time she was making such a request ever since I started working, but I simply could not do it. I needed sufficient rest and this was something uh, babysitting her friend's child would not let me do. So, I went ahead and told my mother I could not go and gave my reasonings. But she claimed I had grown wings because I got a job. Her idea of clipping my wings was to give me a dirty slap. After I insisted, I could not go. It was the first time my mom was hitting me as I have never been disobedient to her and her slap did not move until she asked me to leave the house. This was around 8 p.m. and I knew it was either I went to babysit the kid or I became a homeless girl. Well, you know what I probably chose. And angrily boarded a cab to Thelma's place. I get to Thelma's place when she was on call with my mom and I was the topic of their discussion. I was certain my mom was the one over the phone as Thelma immediately noted that I've arrived. The moment they were done talking, the ungrateful jerk began making these annoying comments about, I don't know, me feeling too big, that I could not listen to my own mother. Well, she just blabbed nonsense that seemed to hurt me to the core. Thelma had never given me a thank you ever since I started doing work for her, babysitting her child who I always met in a mess. Thelma had an Uber come to pick her up to where my mom was waiting for her, and before leaving the house, she dashed out instructions about what should be done to her child. I sat down for like 30 minutes to let my anger die down about this, but the more I waited, the more it seemed to burn. It got to the point where the only thing I could think of was getting back at my mom and her friend. Thelma's kids began crying and I went to pick her up and I was then getting the idea for a perfect revenge. I called the Child Protection Services and informed them that a child was in danger. I gave them my live location and Child Protective Services got to the place in a jiffy. It was as though they were by the corner waiting for my call and I identified myself as the caller and noted that I had called to report the situation that I believe could be endangering the child as the child's mother has left the child alone here while she went out to party. I told them for a fact that she frequently neglects her child and often asks others to babysit at the last minute, which has put the child in potentially dangerous situations before. The agency saw the case as potentially serious when I started to speak. The rashes on the body of the child, the dirty environment, were proof of what I was talking about. So, I rounded my statement saying I was concerned for the child's safety and I believed an investigation was necessary to ensure the child's well-being. Child Protective Services was about taking away the child when my mother and her friend Thelma showed up at the place. A neighbor had called to inform Thelma of the situation. My mother and her friend were both thrown into confusion as they did not understand why CPS was about taking away Thelma's child. The agency informed them that a call had come in and it brought the child situation to their notice. They noted that they would be taking away the child pending when they're done with their investigation. My mother and her friend were surprised and they noted that I was assigned to take care of the child as they had both gone to work. You should have seen the faces of the agents. They did not believe my mother and Thelma at all. Anybody with a little sense could tell from the way they were dressed and the smell of alcohol on their breath that they were out partying and not working, as they claimed. The agents pointed out the situation of the environment where the baby was staying and according, well, it was gratitude for reaching out to them. The face of my mother and Thelma turned toward me as they heard the agent say I had put through the call. The one they had assigned to take care of the child had made the call. 
CPS took away Thelma's child and said they would contact after a thorough investigation and assessment just to see if I was able to train the child otherwise. Her baby would be sent to a foster child home. Thelma went mad as they drove away and she directed her anger at me and even my mother as she claimed my mother had a share in her misfortune. The neighbors watched as the drama played on all night long. My mom took me home that night and it was another round of fury from her. She asked why I would ever do that and uh, vented out anger too. It was already midnight and I was so exhausted but I knew drama would ensue. I told her I was not sorry for what I've done and that I would not apologize for it in any way and I even accused her of not being a friend by saying that if she was truly Thelma's friend then she would have told her long ago to show some sense of responsibility by taking care of her darn child herself. My mother sent me out of the house at midnight. I knew she was offended but I did not expect she would kick me out at this time of night. She said, since I was old enough to be disrespectful and make this sort of thing happen, then I was old enough to get a place of my own. I was locked outside for about an hour, and I felt she was going to open the door and let me in at some point, but that was far from the case. She was serious. I thought about calling my friends, but none of them lived close by. I just slept outside till morning, and I had to borrow a neighbor's mobile device to reach my granddad. I cried as I told my granddad my mother had kicked me out of the house last night because of her friend and I had caught a cold. Granddad was so shocked. I knew he had lots of questions, but he did not bother asking and he just hung up the phone. I don't know what he told my mom, but she came looking for me at the neighbor's place and asked that I come home. She claimed that I was not done with making her life bitter and that's why I called grandfather to have him almost preach her to death. It's been three days since the event, and the tension in the house has been unbearable. My mom and I, we don't talk. She doesn't care if I'm alive or if I'm dead, and I think she's trying to see how she could help her friend Thelma get back at her child. Thelma had threatened to make my mother and I pay if she loses custody of her child for good, and with the way my mother's desperately trying to get back with her friend, I suspect she could have something on my mom. I'm making plans to go to my grandfather's place by tomorrow, and I've already called in to quit my job. When I get to this place, I'll tell him about the kind of life in which my mother lives and how she's prioritized her friendship with her, well, devilish friend over me. What's up, everybody? Mr. Redito here. So today's story is a wild one. It looks like we got CPS involved, an angry grandpa, and a mother who doesn't seem to really care much about her daughter. Now, does she? Well, I want to say, if you guys are new to the channel, go ahead and hit that subscribe button for daily videos. There's four updates we're going to look at today. Let's jump into update number one. I've left my mom's place just like I said I would. My mom saw me packing my bags and saw it clear I was either moving out or traveling, but she did not care to ask. I could drop dead right before her and she would not even be bothered. After organizing my things, I packed my bags and told her that I was going to a friend's place to stay for some days. I didn't want to tell her I was going to grandpa's place as she would know I would give him the details of what transpired recently. I was sure she had made up some funny story to cover for what she did to me that day. After hearing my comments about going to a friend's place for a few days, my mother said I was not supposed to be going to spend a few days at a friend's place. She said I was supposed to get a place of my own. Her response was cold, but I was not surprised as I was expecting much from her. Wow. I did not say any other word to her. I just packed up my bags and walked out the door. My mind was made up to never come back to my mother's place and I would stay with grandpa or even sleep on the streets until I get admission into college. I got to grandpa's place and I was looking a bit pale. I had not fully recovered from the cold which I suffered. Grandpa was both glad and surprised to see me, to be honest, and I've never come to his place on my own. After he had given me time to rest and all, we sat down to discuss over lunch. 
He asked about the incident that transpired between me and my mother. I knew what he wanted to do. He wanted to rebuke me when he felt I had fallen short and I told him the truth without menacing a word. From the part where my mom had sent me to her friend's place to babysit her child to the part where I had called in child support and the events right after. Grandpa had this look of displeasure written all over his face as I told him the kind of life his daughter led. He told me I had done the right thing in calling CPS. He promised to call my mother and talk some sense into her and then he then asked when my college would be resuming and I told him I didn't know as I wasn't a student. Grandpa's eyes grew big and he wanted to be sure that he had heard correctly so he asked the question again and I did not just, well, change it. I gave him the same reply. I gave him a very clear and more shocking one with more details. I told Grandpa I was offered admission into college the previous year, but my mother asked that I turned it down as she was not financially ready to cater to my needs. I went on to tell him of my intentions to inform him of the situation of things, but Mom had stopped me as she claimed that he barely had enough to live on. Grandpa was so hurt. He disclosed to me that he had been sending money to my mother for my upkeep ever since we moved out of his house years ago, and he noted my mother had been taking money for my college tuition and claimed. The night when we had the child support issue, she had told him that I was on holiday. Grandpa began giving a sermon about how greed had ruined people and the Bible and how its irresponsible parents had gotten punished by God. It's been three days now, and he's been silent on the matter. He even asked me not to call my mother to tell her that I'm at his place, and I'm sure he's planning something. Update number two. Three weeks have passed ever since my last update, and my mother never bothered to call me for once to know where I was and how I was faring. Grandpa just patiently watched to see if what I what told him was true from my mother's actions, and he was convinced. He knew only an irresponsible mother would not bother reaching out to her daughter who left home three weeks ago. According to him, it did not matter if I had offended her. It was her daughter, and she was supposed to be the mature one. Besides, she was the one who owed me an apology as if she was the one who behaved like an immature fella. After my granddad had waited for three weeks and my mom did not call, he decided now to call her while feigning ignorance of the whole thing. My mother hesitated in picking up her call, but she finally did it, and Grandpa put the call on speaker so I could hear what she was saying. Grandpa asked how we were faring and how my academics were going, and my mother should be considered getting into the movie industry because only a few actresses would be able to do what she did. She said we were both doing great, and I had gone back to school. I almost laughed when she said that. She was exposing herself, and she didn't even know it. My mother just did not lie about everything. She began trying to get some money from Grandpa, and she said my exams were right around the corner, and there were fees that need to be paid, and she even claimed the school authorities had warned, well, me, that they would stop me from writing the exam if I did not cover the fees. I was so dumbfounded listening to all her lies. My grandpa then asked the question how much the fees were, and she said it was $2,000. Grandpa promised to give it to her in a week, but he told her he needed to see her as he was sick and wanted to write his will. He asked that she came in three days, and my mother assured my grandfather she was doing to do so. The promise which he had made to give her the $2,000 for my alleged tuition was what prompted her to come. The call ended with my mother feeling like she was on top of the matter and Grandpa could not help it. He began quoting Bible passages about how my mom was edging close to destruction and she would be coming tomorrow and knowing who Grandpa is, I'm sure he has something planned for her. Update number three. Hey guys, I'm so eager to make this update, so let's get into it. My mother made her visit, and it was a very dramatic show. She showed up on the day she said she would, and Granddad had me initially stay inside till the time appointed for me to show up. Grandpa, while welcoming her, said he missed me and wished my mother had come along with me as it had been a while since he saw me, but he admitted it was impossible as I was in school. 
My mother concurred with him, and she said I was in school preparing for the exams, but she would have me come over to his place once I was done with it. Granddad acted as though I fell for a lie, and Mother attempted to tilt the conversation towards the $2,000 which she had asked for, and the will which she wanted to be signed. Well, Granddad noted that he would give her the money as he promised, but said he was still waiting for his lawyer as regards to the will. Granddad then said he had prepared lunch ahead of her coming, and asked that they ate while waiting for his lawyer. They both went to the dining table and I began bringing out the dish, which I had prepared, and my mother froze. My mother knew right then that she had been exposed, but I did not say a word. I acted like I wasn't even seeing her and Grandpa looked at her in anger for a minute or so while she bowed her head in shame. It was a great way to blow her cover and Granddad had come up with the plan. He asked her, why she chose to neglect his warnings and live her life like there was never going to be consequences for her actions. He began coming down hard on her with quotes from the Bible. He would quote a verse of the Bible that promised punishment for the ungodly and use it to bash my mother. I wasn't the one on the hot seat, but I was feeling the heat. Mom could not take the whole thing, and at some point she reacted... She spoke rudely to Grandpa, accused me of being ingrate. Grandpa was a retired army chaplain, like I mentioned, but he was not rusty. He gave my mother three dirty slaps and called her a disgrace to the family. The slaps that my mother received threw her to the ground. She stood up and ran out and said, Your sins will find you soon. Grandpa, who was furious, screamed that, and this drama occurred yesterday, and Grandpa has not spoken a word ever since. I guess he's still pained by his own daughter. Update number four. Grandpa shut Mother out of his life for good, and knowing who he is, I can say that there will be no turning back on that decision. After Mother's visit, we never thought that we'd see her again, but we did. She showed up at the house a week later, and she did not come alone. She came with her friend Thelma. They both dressed like they were preachers, and this was a direct contrast to who they actually were or how they actually always appeared. I knew it was either they had genuinely changed their ways or they were up to something. So, I suspected that they were up to something as such sporadic change could not have occurred less than a week. Immediately. Well... Grandpa set his eyes on Mom and her friend, and they both went on their knees and began to apologize. To my amazement, Mother and Thelma would quote passages from the Bible that talked about forgiveness and reconciliation. I get that as a result of my mom's background, she had some passages of the Bible, but I never expected that someone like Thelma knew something like the Bible even existed. Grandpa's not one to be easily fooled, but he wanted to see where the act would end up, so he invited them into the house. They did not even waste time dwelling on the Forgiveness Act. They went ahead to the state the reason of further coming. From what they said, the Child Protection Service had begun the investigation into the matter, and the only way Thelma would not lose custody of her child was if I could testify and take back the things in which I've said. They just wanted me to claim most of the things which I said were always out of anger, as I was under a lot of stress. Grandpa spoke on my behalf, and he claimed the passages of forgiveness which they quoted touched him in a way he was willing to let things slide. He promised that I would go back to the agency and retract my initial testimony. Well, my mother and her friends left Grandpa could not hide his disgust at the fact that they tried using the way of God to manipulate things in their favor. He did ask me, though, go back to the agency and tell them how my mother and Thelma had come to coerce me into altering the things I initially said, and I did as Grandpa said, and that was how Thelma lost custody of her child. She came with my mother to the house to pour out her anger when the verdict was passed, but Grandpa was waiting for them. Grandpa, well, asked him to leave his house and warned that if he ever showed up at the property, he would have them arrested and locked up for trespassing. Mom knew this was definitely something her father could easily do with just a phone call to some friends. 
He told mom to consider herself dead to him and promised to have her locked up for using me to defraud him for money for all these years of my troubled life. Wow. Mom had no other option than to leave her friend Thelma. Thelma began pouring her frustration on mom as they left and I believe my mom's problems are just starting. I'm still expecting my college admission, which Grandpa has promised to pay, but I'm at peace, and that's really all that matters. So there was some interesting comments about this one. The biggest one was saying, I don't know, what took OP so long to go ahead and tell her grandfather about everything OP's mother's been up to? Why did it take so many breaking points? before she finally just confessed and said, Grandpa, listen, all this stuff my mother is doing is absolutely absurd. And I had to call Child Protective Services, and by the way, all this money that you're sending her is not going to my college. I'm not even in college. So guys, let me know, what do you think of that comment that basically says OP should have reacted sooner? Drop your thoughts down below in the comment section. I gate crashed a funeral and ended up getting more than what I was bargaining for. I have no one else to talk to about this and people would think that I'm crazy. I know that there's no way this is true. I know everything about my family. There's no way that my grandmother has been keeping such a secret for so many years. Now I wonder if this was the reason that my mom turned out the way that she did. Now I'm not sure if I hate her as much as I do for what she's put me through. I have just come back to my hometown. I moved away about two years ago just to get a better life for myself. There's nothing much here for anyone. I mean, there's jobs, but not the kind of jobs that I wanted to settle for. My biggest fear growing up was, of course, turning into a small town girl. I wanted to be more, to be honest, I was chasing the bright lights of Hollywood. A friend I met at art camp years ago invited me to come live with her in the city. She was attending casting calls and frequently had even landed a few gigs. I was so much better than working at the local pub and serving drunks that could not keep their hands to themselves. So, I left and ended up sharing a tiny broom closet with my friend Ivy. We have had so much adventures together over the past two years, not gaining much success, but still having fun. We get by through waitressing, cleaning, and freelancing, and when we both book jobs, we get a good chunk of money, which we used to invest back into our future. I don't know much about our her family. She told me that there's a bunch of narrow-minded people who do not support her dreams. For me, it's different. My grandmother supports my dreams, and I visit her as often as I can. She's tried her hardest to raise me with little to no support from my parents, and I don't know my father. Some sort of generational curse I got from my mom. She, too, does not know who her father is. Her mother only told her that he was in the military and never remembered. Well, I remember once when I was 12, I found a bunch of pictures in the attic of my grandmother and a man... They looked like they were in love, and thinking that I have solved the mystery, I showed her the pictures. To my dismay, she was very displeased of my discovery. She told me to never tell anyone about those pictures, and to never go snooping up in the attic ever again. This is leading into something, I swear. Just bear with me, guys. I don't know who my father and grandfather are, but my mom and grandmother had kids out of wedlock. That is one of the reasons why I wanted to leave the town. I don't want people to talk about me and assume that I will do the same thing. They can be very insensitive when they talk about my family. This leads me to how I ended up at a funeral I had no business being at. I've never been to a funeral before up until I was invited by Ivy. She told me that her great aunt had passed away and... She did not like the side of her family, so she needed me to come with her just for a bit of support. Also, her mother, who was very much against my friend being a thespian, was present. I had nothing to do, so she told me that we could fly first class. I agreed to attend the funeral. I've never flown first class. 
She needed my support, and the funeral was in the town right next to mine. I figured that after the funeral, I would visit my grandmother. Everything was going well at the funeral, until I noticed an old man looking at me. He kept on looking at me to the point where I got very uncomfortable. Well, the service ended, and then we went to a very big house, where the after tears were to be held. It was the funeral of some very wealthy women, who was Ivy's great aunt. The aunt said that she had not even known the women for long, but she had been forced to attend the funeral. So there I was, minding my own business, eating some, well, food, and trying not to fit in. When a very intimidating lady came up to me, and she looked me up and down like I was a vermin, and she told me that the staff was not supposed to be eating the food. I told her that, oh, sorry, um, you're actually mistaken, I'm not part of the staff. She told me that if I was not staff or family, then what was I doing here? Well, I was about to explain to her when she told me to get out. I wanted to tell her that I was with Ivy, but I was lost for words at her rudeness. The look that she gave me was absolutely deafening, and I could tell that she was already judging me. Looking at the only black dress that I had that was appropriate like it was a rag. I told her that I could not just leave, my friend was here, and she then said that she knew the likes of me, here for crumbs and the gossip about what happened to the fallen matriarch. She even told me that the funeral was a private event, therefore I was not allowed, and it was like she could smell that I was not a part of this elite, as they called themselves. I was used to such treatments in the city. I mean, I usually steered away, but this time I could not. I'm not here to support my friend. I'm here because she asked me to be. Now I could see why she did not want to be part of the family. Just looking around, I could see that they were a bunch of snobbish bunches. They reeked of wealth so badly that I actually wanted to vomit. There was also an eerie feeling I was having, and I felt myself shiver, and then I turned away. I started to make my way out the door to where I left my coat. I texted Ivy, letting her know that I was going to leave early. I walked down a garden path to where I could see the gate, and then I found myself being pulled to the side. I wanted to scream. All I could think about was the fact that I was going to get killed on these grounds, and I believe I do watch too many true crime shows. <laughs> I locked eyes with the creepy old man from before, and he shook me. He was very upset. He looked like he was in disbelief that maybe he had seen a ghost. And then he said my mother's name, which is Alexa. He asked why I was there and how I found him. I wanted to crawl out of my skin right then and there. I tried to scream, but he gestured for me to shut up. I looked into his eyes, and then suddenly I did not feel like I was in danger anymore. He had some of the saddest but kindest eyes I've ever seen. He also had a very familiar look in those eyes. He clearly thought that I was my mom, which is crazy because my mom is 15 years older than me. Maybe. Oh no, not one of my mother's clients had I just stumbled upon one of my mother's so-called suitors at the funeral. I internally cringed, and it appeared that she was back in town, and if people thought I was her, then I was not going to catch a break. I mean, I knew that a six-month stint and smoking had aged me pretty bad, but not to the point of looking 15 years older like her. I told them that I was sorry. I was not my mother. I was about to leave when he asked where I stayed, and I told him that, with all due respect, sir, I could not tell him where I was going, because that's weird, I don't know him. And then he opened his wallet and gave me some money, told me to be safe, and then off he was. I just shook my head and looked down at the money, it was two hundred dollars, I sure hoped I was not receiving my mother's payment. I made a mental note to put her in her place when I get home. Already, our family had a bad reputation, and now she was messing around with this gentleman who had just left? I decided to get myself a cab to a cafe, then I would get home. My stuff was in Ivy's car, so I told her to bring everything to me tomorrow. Then I ate some food and I left. 
grandma was home. She was feeling a bit under the weather, so I spent the rest of the day nursing her cold, and I noticed my mother's shoes by the fireplace and realized that she must be around somewhere. So, I fell asleep watching some videos on my phone, and about the same time, there was a knock at the door. I opened the door just to find the man right there from earlier, and he had my bags. I asked him where the heck Ivy was, and he told me that his niece was a bit tired and had gone to sleep. Gone to sleep? So he thought to bring this to me, and then he smiled at me like we were old friends or something, and I reached for my pepper spray. But of course, I was in my pajamas, and I said thank you, and then just grabbed my things from him, and then he looked behind me and asked me where my mother was. He said it very loudly, too. If my grandmother saw this, she would not be very happy, so I told him not to say another word. He asked me why. He just wanted to see her. I told him that she did not do business here. He asked me, what the heck am I talking about? Well, I was not having any of this, so I told him that I was going to call the police. And just then, he looked like he had been struck by lightning. He looked behind me and said my grandmother's name. I turned around and my grandmother looked like she had seen a ghost. So, you know what? I asked her, who is this man? And then she said that he was my grandfather. I told her there's no way he died in war. She shook her head and then she broke down in tears and I ran up to her to catch her before she collapsed. She did not say anything for minutes while she cried. And then I looked at him and he was smiling but tears were rolling down his cheeks. Oh, it had been my grandfather and not some creepy man who was looking to kidnap me. I have serious trust issues, guys. I know. I told him to come in and take a seat. My grandmother was done crying and she told me to leave the room. This was not fair. I needed all the tea. And if you have not figured it out yet, he is Ivy's uncle, which means that all along I was living with my cousin. Wow, my mind is blown. I've not gone back into the living room yet and wait. I think I heard my mother's voice. I wonder how she will react. I'll update you guys soon. What's up, everybody? Mr. Reddito here. So today's story is very, very special because it goes on many, many updates and it just keeps getting crazier and crazier. You think the ending of the first part was crazy? Just wait until update two. If you guys are new to the channel, my name is Mr. Reddito and I narrate stories daily. Make sure you hit that subscribe button and let's jump into the first update. Sorry, I could not continue right then and there. The drama has just gotten worse. So my mom did not have the best reaction to finding out that her father was here. She asked him if he wanted to claim her now, even with her lifestyle, and I went out to peek and see what was going on. This was better than a telenova. Through peeking, I found out that my grandma had an affair with him a long time ago. She was his mentor at work, and even though she was younger than him... She was doing well for herself and making her family proud. Once she trained him, they did not see each other for another two years. Even when the unresolved feelings that she had for him. She thought that he could never like her, but oh boy, he did. The only problem was that they met when he was engaged because, well, he got married. And then they started having an affair. When my grandmother found out she was pregnant, she told him, and he could not bring himself to ask her to terminate the baby, so he gave her money and told her to disappear. He continued life with his work, and, well, she tried to update him on the baby's progress, but he never responded. My mom found out that her father was someone else's husband. She did not know who he was, but at that time she was 12 years of age. She begged her mom to tell her, but her mom dared not. If it got out, it would have catastrophic results. For her own sanity, she made my mother swear not to tell him who the heck my grandfather was, and then three years later, my mom had a teenage pregnancy. When my grandmother mentioned that, I figured out it was the very best way to ask my mom about my father. It seemed like we were in a paternity court, so I figured my mom owed me. 
My mom was raging. She kept on looking at her dad and scoffing, and my grandmother tried to get her to calm down, but she wanted none of it. So then I asked mom if she was so mad about this, then she better tell me who my real dad is because I'm mad too. At least then I would not have a situation like this. She told me to shut up and go back to my room like she always does. Well, I was riled up. I asked her how she felt knowing that I thought my grandfather was one of her clients. He asked if what he had heard was true about my mother. I asked him how he knew anything about her. He said he had been keeping a close eye on her for several years, but the information was minimal. Mom looked him in the eyes and told him that she was proud of what she does, because it brought food into the house and put bread on the table, even if some higher-than-thou people in this house wanted to turn their noses up at her profession. He looked sick to his stomach, but his head on his hands, and he started sobbing. He kept on saying that this was all his fault. I felt sorry for the poor man. I know what he did was very crappy, but my mom was being extra. After the traumatic childhood that she was given me, she better not say a word about it. And my grandmother then asked him if it was okay for him to leave and we would just talk tomorrow. He said he would, but he wanted to say something. And when he saw me at the funeral, he realized that he missed his family. The people he was surrounded by just wanted to spend his money and... Now that his wife was gone, he did not have to keep that secret anymore. He wanted it to be known that he had me, grandma, and mom. I asked if he did not have kids with his wife, and he just sighed. He told me that those kids were something else, that they have taken after his wife. He asked us if we would consider moving in with him and becoming part of his family. Well, that was obviously so random. I don't know what to do, and I'm not sure if I should even have a choice, but I think that only my grandmother can agree to move in with him. Also, guys, I'm related to Ivy. Update number two. Hey, so I know you guys have been waiting to hear what grandma discovered. She did not disappoint at all. She said that we would move in, but if his family treated me and mom badly, then we would leave. It felt like I was in a Princess Diaries movie, and I could already see it. We were going to have lessons in etiquette and new clothing and etc., but there was none of that. We landed right in the middle of a war zone, and we had just finished packing our things when we heard screaming, so I ran in the direction of the screams, trying to figure out what the heck was going on. I came downstairs only to find a woman who was screaming at another woman whom I recognized to be Ivy's mother. I realized then that, shoot, I forgot to message Ivy and tell her that we were family. It all happened so fast and it was coupled with trying to convince my mom to come with us. I still think that we should have left her to her devices and not brought her here. Ivy's mom was holding a little poodle, and she was calling the other woman a monster. The other woman was holding a dress that was ripped, and she was screaming her head off and saying that the other one would pay. The little poodle, on the other hand, looked traumatized, and I walked up to them watching the drama, and then they started to struggle, and in that struggle, the poodle fell into the water. The two women did not notice. They were too busy fighting each other, and... I looked into the water in a panic and noticed that the poodle was struggling to stay afloat. I did not think at all. I just jumped into the water and grabbed the poodle. And then a thundering voice shouted asking what was going on. I was in the pool holding the poodle while two women looked like they had just been through the jungle. I got myself out of the pool and handed the pooch to the middle-aged man who was standing there with a thundering look upon his face. He asked who the hell I was, and I told him that I'm Eva. We were related. He just looked at me funny and told that two ladies to explain themselves right now. I then noticed that the other one was the woman who kicked me out of the funeral, and she looked terrible. With scratches on her face, talk about a cat fight. She pointed at Ivy's mom and said that she set the cat on her clothes, and Ivy's mom said that she did not. She should not have left the door open. The man then asked Lucia who, why we were always fighting with his sister and did not have better things to do. And then Lucia looked at me and said she knew me. 
I was that poor girl who gate-crashed the funeral, and I told her that, hey, I'm actually also family. I was just so excited to have family, and even though they did seem a bit crazy. Update, one month later. Hey guys, so it's been a month since I moved in with my grandfather and his family. Getting to know my new family has been interesting, to say the least. A few of them, like my grandfather, are actually pretty cool people who may have been very welcoming, which has helped us all settle in. Then the rest, who are not friendly to us and treat us like we do not belong, and among all of these is just craziness. There is one thing that's bothering me, though, which is Ivy's reaction. Ivy's mom told her that we had arrived and what was happening, and she had only heard that there were going to be new members in the family but she never once dreamed that it would be me. After I explained the strange story of how my grandfather and great-uncle met, I expected her to at least be welcoming, but instead she was indifferent and asked me when we were going back to the city since we had a couple of auditions lined up. I'd already forgotten about my dream due to my excitement, and my best friend was related to me. No wonder that we shared such a great connection all this time. I told her, that maybe we could stay here for a bit, spend a bit of time with family, and take a break. We had been working so hard in the city that I felt a break, well, it could have been much needed. She told me that she did not want to stay in that house for much longer. Besides, her parents had an apartment close by, and they expected her to stay with them when she was in town. Her issue with her mom was a long story, but she warned me against her. She told me that I had to be careful who I trusted in this house because everyone was trying to further their agendas. She then told me that the man who had broken up the fight was her mother's cousin, who she was close to and called her brother. The woman that fought with Ivy's mother was his wife, Lucia. Lucia was a diva and a snob. She respected no one, not even her own husband, and her personality was so similar to Ivy's mom that they often clashed. His name was Martin, and he was the oldest son. My mother is younger than him and is a middle child, and after him and Theodore and Andrew. Theodore works for grandfather's company, and Andrew, well, he's overseas. Some family members live in the house, others have their own property, and some do not even live in the city. I thank Ivy for giving me an introduction to my new family, and... I know that I'm not from the same background as them, but I want to get to know them and accept them. I mean, do you blame me? While Ivy and I were talking, a helper told us that dinner tonight would be a family meeting as well. I asked Ivy how the reaction had been when Grandfather revealed that he was bringing us to stay with them. She told me that no one was happy and they all felt betrayed. He tried to explain the situation to him, but everyone felt that it was disrespectful to the memory of his late wife. When she said that, I realized how it must have been for them to find out that he had been keeping such a secret from them. I could understand if they did not want me here. So, I was, after all, the daughter of an illegitimate daughter. Suddenly, I just felt out of place, and the family dinner slash meeting was very eventful. Yeah. At the end of it, I wanted to go home, and my grandmother was subject to a lot of questions from his son. They did not hold back. They demanded that a DNA test be done on my mother to make sure that she was part of the family. They made it clear that they did not consider us to be part of the family, and they told my grandfather that this would be a PR nightmare if it ever got out. His response was that while he had made a mistake... He had also wronged us, and he had wronged everyone, and was going to do his best to fix it. He said that he is sad, that his wife never knew what he did, and, but he could not just abandon us since we were his blood, and he said that he did not care what people said. He was old now and only wanted his family in peace. They were livid. They called him selfish, telling him to send us back to where we came from, and I did not say a word throughout all of it. At least, I had Ivy by my side. She gave me a reassuring tug every once in a while, and guys, after that absolutely horrible dinner, where my mom lost her temper and walked off, I went with Ivy to her room. 
She told me that she was leaving in the morning and if I wanted to preserve my peace, then it was better for me to join her. But if I wanted to stay with them, then I was risking my own sanity. I cannot leave my mom and grandma in the pits of a viper. I know that Ivy cares about me, but I'm going to stay and see how it goes. Not all of them are that bad. The younger kids are so nice to me and are completely oblivious to how everyone else feels about us. That is what I like about young kids. They simply don't know how to judge. Update six months later. Hey guys, I know I have not posted in quite some time, to be honest. I have just been so busy settling in. After the morning period, many people ended up leaving. After Ivy left, I spent most of the time with my grandparents. Grandma was happy to be here, but also a bit guilty, since she was only here because Grandpa's wife had died. I asked her if she never saw herself and Grandpa reconciling, and she said that she did not think so. It was too early to be thinking about that either way. That was the last time that I even asked that question, though. And as for my grandfather, we became very, very close. Almost inseparable. We went out on these long walks in the garden, and he told me stories of his youth, about the family, and the history of the home. Sometimes we went out for brunch, and once he even took me to the casino. As we grew older and closer, I realized that he was very lonely. His sons were taking good care of the company and his grandchildren lived with their parents and other family members simply lived far away. The only people who lived in the house were me, mom, grandma, grandpa, and his two sons who did their best to avoid mom and me. It was not a secret that they did not like us. Whenever I asked grandpa for something when they were there, they would give me this very funny look, but when they were not there, it was just me and grandpa. He was very kind, intelligent, and he understood me, but as for my mother, she did not like him at all. She ignored him, especially once he gave her a black card to use for what she wanted with an unlimited credit. She spent her days shopping and sleeping, doing nothing productive with her life, and I avoided her as well, feeling that she was such a child. It was like we were on an island, away from the rest of society, and it was perfect. We did not have to worry about anyone or anything. I mean, honestly, guys, it was just us. But of course, every cloud has a slimy lining, which comes into two. It was two women who had been fighting that afternoon when we arrived. My grandpa felt that I was spending too much time in the house and that I needed to be around other young ladies. So we called Lucia and told her to take me to the spa where I could meet other young women whom I could be friends with, and I was still friends with Ivy, but she was so busy on sets these days that I could not always get a hold of her, you know. So, we arrived at the spa. It was my first time being there, and we were given some champagne, and they even pampered us with really nice massages. Lucia did not speak to me much, which, honestly, I didn't really mind, that was until a friend of hers joined us and they started gossiping about people that I simply didn't even know. And then the lady revealed that she had just gotten a necklace that was costing upwards of 250,000 US dollars from her husband. Lucia asked if he was cheating again and the lady just laughed out loud, saying yes. Well, she tried to play it off a bit, but she looked really, really hurt and sad. I felt sorry for her, even though she had been talking badly about other people before this, I still felt bad. She said that she found out which common woman it had been, and it was about a year ago, and he had been hiring some sort of escort service. Right then, Lucia laughed, looked at me, and said that she hoped that it had not been my mother. I told her, you better shut up. My mom did not do that anymore, and I was very embarrassed that she would even say that, as people turned to look at us to see what the commotion was. Lucia said it was definitely her. She knew all about her past job. Another woman asked her to share what this job was and also asked who I was. Lucia laughed in cold and mocking laugh. 
She was like an owl, picking at prey, and I was the prey. That was the day that I knew I could never get along with this woman. She said that I was the illegitimate granddaughter from when my grandfather had his dirty affair. And the product was my mom. The escort. I told her to please stop it. I did not like the way the women were looking at me and they asked to see a picture and I begged her. I pleaded with her and said, please don't do it. She still did it. As each woman looked at my mother's pictures, their lips started curling and their eyes rolled. Her friend who had been talking about the cheating turned red as she said, yes, that's her. She told me to leave. She didn't want to be in the same room as me. Her daughter, Ariana, who I'd been talking to and getting along with, gave me a very dirty look and said she did not want to be friends with me. After that, I left. I didn't want to cause drama, but after that day, I could not even attend any functions. All the women looked at me funny because they knew what my mom used to do. I did not tell mom and gran why I did not want to go out anymore and the whole thing just made me so sad. It was because of them, these snobs who think that they're better than us, that mom and I never even stood a chance growing up. Mom never got to know her dad. And she turned rebellious and ended up making some very poor life choices. Well, I had tried to break the cycle, but I had nothing to show for it now. Instead, I was here trying to fit in with people who don't like me at all. Guys, this all happened, I don't know, about a week ago. But now I think that I simply want to leave. Update. They really don't want us here and they'll do anything to get rid of us. As I'm writing this, I'm fighting with myself trying not to cry. I've had enough of this family, you know. They are the worst people to ever exist and they've ruined my life. How long will my past keep on going and following me, you ask? Till it destroys me? I got out of their hair, that is what they wanted, but no, they want to beat me till I can't go anymore. After the drama at the spa, I decided that I needed to leave for a while. I told my grandfather that I wanted to go back to pursuing my dreams. He was supportive, but he said that he would only allow me under one very strict condition. That I would go back to school, drama school, and he said having some sort of education would help my chances in life. And I would meet people who would help me advance my career. So, for the past five months, I've actually been at drama school and I've enjoyed the lessons so much. And the teachers here are so inspiring. This has reaffirmed the fact that I want to be an actress. A teacher who was inspiring me is one of the older teachers named Dario. He's in his 30s, if not 40s, and I don't know, he's good at this stuff. His lessons always leave me in something valuable. In a couple of months, we're going to be presenting a play, and guess who got the lead? That's right, me. I can't believe I got the lead when the first years never get the lead, but I've been working hard and I do have experience from a few small roles that I've played over the years. Either way, not everyone is happy about it and there's a girl called Ariana, remember her mom when my mom had an affair with her husband? Yeah, that is her. She had made my life hell at the academy and I will not go into detail, but I can tell you that she's not the nicest to me. She wanted that part and she did not get it, even though she's always the lead. Because of that, she started these rumors that I messed around with Dario, the director, a favor like my mom does. It's not true. I respect him and would never think about him like that. This has led me to uh, be unable to enjoy my birthday weekend. It was the very first weekend that I've had with my family since I went off to the academy. I came home with a few surprises. Ivy's mom and my mom are now best friends. In addition to that, my mom and grandpa actually get along well now. They were both there for my birthday. There was not much drama and I was having so much darn fun. Especially since Ivy was going to arrive later on in the evening, and it was a weekend celebration, so three whole days of celebrating me. But then, of course, nothing in this house is ever dull. 
Oh man, crap hit the fan when Ariana, Stacy, and some girls from the academy arrived. I asked mom who invited them and even told them about my birthday. She told me that she thought that we were friends and they even sent her messages and I told her to tell them to leave. I didn't want them here. My mom told me that I could not do that because it would simply be rude and we were also trying to fit in. It would not look good if we started just kicking people out. I then saw that Lucia was also present which absolutely ruined my entire mood. Ugh. And then she went to make a toast to me. She acted like she liked me and only said good things about me and then she mentioned that I got the lead role. Everyone was in awe and started to congratulate me. I sighed. Lucia and her big mouth and on Monday I was planning on stepping down from the role and having Ariana take it and Ariana approached me when I was talking to someone and pulled me to the side. She told me that I could not have that role, it was hers. My mother saw this and told her to stay away from her daughter. Ariana laughed and told her that I was becoming a homewrecker like her and she did not have a right to interfere, especially after ruining her parents' marriage. Mom asked what she was talking about, and I whispered to her telling her who Ariana was. Mom told her to leave, but she refused and she said she would not leave until she exposed us. She then brought out a picture of me sitting with Dario. We had our heads bent over a script, sitting close and nothing was happening in the picture, I swear, but to someone with an untrained eye who did not have context, oh boy, it looked bad. Then, Ariana said that I slept with a director to get the role. Tears streamed down my cheeks as I tried to explain. Mom gripped my hand and looked me dead in the eyes and told me to tell her the truth. Did I do it? I said no, I had not. She breathed a sigh of relief and said good because that was my father. The next thing I knew I was running. I kept on running and running and running and running and running. It was all too much. My father was right in front of my eyes and I didn't even know it. And if my math was right, my mom was turning 16 when she had me. I'm back at school right now in my dorm and I'm shaken. Writing it down has helped me to feel a bit better, but the fact remains that my father is here and I don't know what the heck to do. Updates. One week later. I've had a week straight out of a novel... Let me tell you about it, there's been so much going on that I've not been able to wrap my little head around it. But the burning issue, which I'm sure you're eager to hear about, is what happened when I confronted my father. Well, after a good night's rest, I decided that I wanted to talk to my mother. She owed me answers. So the next day, we went out for coffee and she told me all about my father. When she was younger, she liked to dance. After school, she went to a dance academy. It was for people over the age of 18, but she lied about her age and used a fake ID to get in. She paid for it by babysitting on the weekends as it was not that expensive to buy one. That's where she met my father, Dario. He was a senior learner and they fell in love and the result was, well, me. He had a passion but did not have a stable job, so my mother did not tell him about me and she lied to her mom about how she got me, and the matter was closed for years. She did not know that all along he was in town, and she promised me that we would go and see him and tell him about me, but first she had something important to tell me. When my grandfather had us move in, several people in the family were very, very unhappy about it, guys. You see, they felt a bit threatened, thinking that it would get the inheritance from them. So they made plans to absolutely ruin our reputation so that Grandfather would not include us in the will. They felt that since we were from a quote, lower class, we would simply not fit in. Those people were named Lucia, Ivy's mother, Martin, and Theodore. It appears that these incidents where my mom and I have been embarrassed are not in isolation. Lucia got her friend to lie about the affair that she supposedly had with Ariana's father. No such thing ever even happened. Wow. My mother, 
left her lifestyle ages ago, and she's also become a close to my mom, so that she could get info about it and ruin my time at the academy. At the same time, Ivy's mom made sure that rumors about me getting the part in an unethical way swirled around like a toilet flushing. She was responsible for the picture that those girls showed my mom. What they did not count on was that they had chosen my own father as a Trojan horse. Of course, once I left, there was absolute chaos, and Grandpa was upset that he had been keeping an eye on them because he simply did not trust them at all. He knew that they might go to extreme lengths to make sure that we got nothing. So then he had them followed, and every device in this house was tapped. I asked my mother if he had always done that, and she said that he told her that his own father used to do it too. It's a habit. That was how, while being the youngest, he got the inheritance over his other greedier siblings. That was obviously a lot to digest, guys. I told mom that I needed a bit of space to think about all this. So I've taken a break from school, and I'm living with my mom at one of grandpa's apartments. Final update. First of all, I want to tell you that I finally got to speak to my dad. Mom invited him to our apartment, and she simply told him the truth. He was very shocked. He told us that he needed to process this, and I've not spoken since ever then, and I do not think that I want to go back to that school. I've already given up my lead role. Going back to that place that is swirling with jealousy and backstabbers is going to kill me. Right now, I've just come back from a family meeting that was, let us say, eventful. It was very dramatic. Grandpa snapped today. He confronted them for the things that they have done to us since we arrived. He told them that while he did not expect them to welcome us with open arms, they should have been a bit respectful. He told them that they were all cut off from the will and he knew that they had all worked together to try to take over the estate. They would have rather let his empire crumble than let us have our tiny little peace. They tried to defend themselves and deny it, but Grandpa had a lot of paperwork, screenshots that detailed their schemes. Can you imagine that Lucia and Ivy's mom actually worked together to get rid of me? I guess the saying is, the enemy of my enemy as my friend applies to them. They tried to deny it and blame each other, but Grandpa told them that they did not deserve a cent. He asked how far they were willing to go. Orchestrating that public humiliation was the very last straw. After that, they did that, and Grandpa decided that he needed to cut them loose. He has decided that he will leave everything to my mom and me. The look on their faces when he announced it was absolutely priceless. Then he had told them all to go to hell and get the hell out of his house. They refused, so he called armed security, and they were all thrown out like dogs. It was so satisfying to watch Lucia beg for mercy after all that she's done to me. Uh, she used to look down on me and assume that I was lesser than her. She's now lesser than me because she has a terrible character. I've just gotten off the phone with Ivy, giving her the details, and she is thrilled. She told me of the years of hell she has because of her mom. She even invited me to come back to the city and pursue our dreams once again. You know what? I might just do it. Guys, if you don't know about the third Mr. Redito channel, it's pretty groundbreaking. I mean, we have daily videos on there too. The name of the channel is Mr. Redito's Revenge. And the reason it's called that is because almost every single story has something to do with revenge. And I'm telling you guys right now, I have found some very, very juicy stories. There's over a hundred videos you can go watch on the channel right now. The link will be in the description below. And if you can't seem to find the description, you can also type in the search bar, Mr. Redito's Revenge, and it'll pop right up. And I'm telling you guys, it's not a channel you're gonna wanna miss. If you think this channel with the inheritance dramas, the mother-in-law disputes, because, well, we know how evil some of the mother-in-laws can get on this channel, just imagine 
if you see some stories that get a little bit of revenge. So guys, make sure you go subscribe to the new channel, Mr. Redito's Revenge. But let's talk about today's story because it was wild. I want to know your exact thoughts about this one. It was a long one. I mean, I found every single possible update. I think the story was over like 40 minutes of action-packed drama. What would you guys have done if you were in OP's position and you come to find out who your family members are after so long of not knowing? Drop your opinions down below. Let's discuss this one, guys. I have nobody I can think more in this entire world than my grandpa. Why do I say this? Why isn't my hero one of my parents? Well, I'll just let you know. When my stepmother decided to try to ruin my life, who was the one that stuck up for me? Oh, grandpa. When I visit my dad's house after not seeing them for an entire year, I was excited about two things. The first being getting to see my younger sister, Lori, after getting to spend time with dad. When I got home, though, I was greeted by a messy house and my father, who looked like he'd not slept in days. I also saw that Whitney, my stepmom, was not home, and I rejoiced when dad told me they were getting a divorce. Everything was in disarray. Turns out he turned this place upside down when he came home to find that Whitney had taken Lori and wanted to divorce him. That wasn't all. As I came to find out when I went to see Whitney and found out what exactly what was going on. To say that Whitney and I do not get along would be an understatement. If I was about to run her over by a car, she would be the one behind the wheel. It's because of her that I moved out last year. I've been living halfway across the country since then. I've always feared her. She was not very nice to me when she got married to dad five years ago. I was open to having a stepmom as I can barely remember my own mother, but she came and took over everything. She convinced dad that I was not an obedient child, and soon enough there were always fights at home. Anything that I wanted from dad, I had to go through her because she felt that since she was his wife, she was in control. Then Lori came along two years ago and my dad completely forgot about me. I started to feel like I was intruding. It did not help that my stepmom was always hounding me because I simply chose not to go to college. I wanted to figure out who I wanted to be, but she spent all day blaming me for whatever was happening in the house. I was just 19. I did not have everything figured out. It sucked, and in the end, I got a job far away and started over. I come home here and there, but only when she's not home. Even though Whitney is a jerk... Lori's such a sweet little baby. It's nice to not be alone and she prefers me over her mom. I'm not kidding. Every day she looks for me and only calms down if she sees me or we have a call. So when I got home to find out that the crazy lady had taken her and refused for my dad to see her until her demands were met, well, I got furious. My father was worried sick about her, but I found out where she was within five minutes if there's one thing that woman is, it's being the vain, so she's predictable. She was at her sister's townhouse. She did not know I was coming, so she opened the door for me. She had an attitude when I answered the door. Also, she was wearing clothes that my peers were wearing. She's 37, but dressed as if she was in her early 20s. Must have had something to do with her much younger boyfriend. She looked like she'd just gotten surgery done. I heard Lori cry and instantly pushed past her. The child was crying. Her voice was hoarse. Whitney had not fed or changed her diaper in who knows how long. After I got the baby to calm down, I asked her what she thought she was doing. She told me to ask my dad, but I forced her to spit it out. She told me that she wants to divorce my father. I asked what the problem was, and she said my dad made her sign a prenup, but she did not have money of her own. She needed him to give her the house he lived in and a monthly allowance. Otherwise, she said that she had secrets that she could let out that would make the court decide that my father was not fit to be a parent. Like, honestly, this sounds like a true gold digger. She was unable to let go of the cozy life. She stopped working five years ago when she got married to dad and had nothing to her name. Her mistake was thinking that she'd fooled him. She got too confident and got a boyfriend who she spent his money with. 
making a fool of my dad. I was shocked asking what she could possibly know that would ruin us. When she told me, I realized that she had us backed in a corner. I knew arguing about begging would not help. Instead, it would make her even more determined to exploit us and embarrass us. She added that in addition to the secret, she had the power to make sure that we would never see Lori again. When I left, I was terrified and angry that she thought she could get to us. When I got home, I found Dad there. He had a hopeful expression on his face and, well, I don't know what sort of miracle he thought I was going to do, but I told him that there's nothing to do but give her the house. Oh, he refused. He said that if he gave in to her demands, she would always have power over him. Well, this made me mad, simply because now I was caught up in this even if I didn't want to be. She told me that she did and the secrets could make sure that we lost everything. Already, my dad's business was struggling. My father said that he was going to sort it out, but how could I trust him to sort anything out after what he did? I knew there was one person who could help us. But if I did this, Dad was going to kill me. He had a lot of pride, but the tactics that he was using to fix this were only making things worse. I hopped on a quick video call to my grandpa, who's a lawyer, and was just starting to talk to him when the screen froze. I turned around and saw that Dad was standing right behind me. He was snuck into the room, I guess. He told me not to tell anyone that he was being blackmailed especially Grandpa. He turned off the internet because he knew, like always, I would run to Grandpa for help. I listened to him because I thought he had a plan when we should have told Grandpa in the very beginning. She did not stop calling, dangling our secrets in front of us. What was worse was that when she did call, I could hear Lori crying in the background, how I hoped that she would not hurt my little sister. One night... She came to my dad's house while I was sleeping. I was awoken by the sound of them arguing, so I crept up to the study and listened in. She was telling him that if he did not give her the house and the money, then she was going to report him to the IRS. My ears perked up then because last time she told me that, it was some funds that he borrowed from his company. And that if the company was audited, he'd be in trouble as the owner. He told her that he was trying as hard as he could to do something about giving her the house, but it was in my name, and I would never agree to it. Guys, this was a lie. Dad was just too stubborn to give her the house. Yeah, I was the co-owner, but I'd said we would give her the house so we could just end this. Then she told him that if he got exposed, then I would be in trouble as well. She told him that if he wanted to act innocent, well then she should send him to jail and take the baby. After the conversation, I knew there was nothing to do but get help from Grandpa. So the next morning, I set out to visit my grandfather, who's a retired lawyer. Honestly, I was scared to tell him what's going on because Dad told me it would make things way worse. But there was nothing to do. For over two days, I thought of ways to get out of this mess while pretending all was okay. Dad told me that he tried to talk to Lori and take her to daycare, but the cops called, and she listed him as a danger to her child. That was a ridiculous thing of her to do. I was scared as to what she would do next if she found out that I was so close to blabbing. I needed my dad to get Lori then at least we could figure out what to do next. Grandpa has a way of knowing when things aren't right. I was stressed because of the pressure that she was putting on me, as well as tired of telling Dad to just confess. In the end, Granddad caught me having a heated phone call with her. That was when he asked why we were being put in such a situation. I broke down when he confronted me and told him every single thing. Granddad was furious after I told him, and I knew that crap was about to hit the fan. Grandpa can be very protective and hard-headed if he has something on his mind, he'll simply not let it go. I told him not to tell Dad yet because, well, he's ashamed. Grandpa told me to keep him to date with everything that's going on when I went back. When I got back, Dad told me there's no way. He was most likely going to jail or going to be in a lot of trouble. He decided to call the lawyer so that we would get the paperwork sorted out. At this point, I saw nothing else that we could do. 
I told Grandpa what was going on, and a few days after, the lawyer came so that we could get everything in order. We were all sitting with Lori in her arms while we waited for him to arrive with the papers. Then my grandpa entered. My stepmom recognized him immediately and she went pale as a ghost. She said that now that we had him involved, she was going to destroy us. She said she did not want the house anymore. Instead, she wanted to strip us of everything that we had. Grandpa told her that she needs to not bother because not only were we going to take her to court for child negligence, but my dad already confessed to the tax fraud. <laughs> it had been a big oversight on my dad's part that she knew about and wanted to expose. If dad had caught, it would have been affected his business badly, but he chose to confess everything. With this help, an investigation was being done and nearly concluded by the time that we had the meeting. Not only that, but Grandpa had the medical report that proved that my sister was suffering from malnourishment. He told her that if she did not leave Lori with us at that very moment, then she would have it off much worse. I don't know what was going through her mind, but she followed through with her threat to make Lori suffer for Dad not giving her the house. When I heard about that was when I told Grandpa to make my dad confess. All along, my dad's been hard-headed, but Grandpa made him see sense and he did confess to the authorities. So, now she had nothing against us. And as for her, there were multiple phone recordings and text exchanges that proved that she'd been blackmailing us. No matter what, though, we all know blackmailing is illegal. And turns out that it's an offense that someone can go to jail for, for a long time. So what do we do? My dad and I pressed charges against her, saying she threatened Lori's life if we did not give in to her demands. That was not good for her at all. She left our house without the child in a fit of rage. She tried to attack my dad, but I was there to keep her off him, while dad called the neighborhood security to get her out of here. Well, she made such a scene that all the neighbors came out to see what the heck was being thrown out. These were the people she had been snobbish to over the years, and who now had something to laugh about? Well, I'm not kidding, the whole place was chuckling. She had bragged way too soon that soon she was going to be the owner of the home. When she married Dad, she thought that she would be marrying rich and getting money for her whole life. The problem was that she broke one of the clauses of the marriage, which was unfaithfulness. Dad decided to divorce her, which was when she was realizing that she was about to walk away with nothing. After we pressed charges against her for extortion, my dad officially filed for divorce with the intent to get Lori's full custody. My grandfather, who had been in retirement along with my dad's lawyer, absolutely destroyed her in court. They exposed that she's been recklessly spending my father's money and had nothing of her own. The medical report that my grandfather thought, clever thinking by the way, that he did on Lori showed that she'd been malnourished and developed a rash while staying with her. It was not just a case of negligence, but one of her being abusive towards my little sister. I testified against her, of course, gladly. But do you know the funny part? She tried to get in my head like the snake that she is and turn against my dad. She reminded me that father had been the one who suggested that I should leave after I decided not to go to college. She told me that he was disappointed in me because I never amounted to anything. Well, that's something that I have to unpack. I'll never forget what she did to Lori. All because she was no more than money hungry. I looked this vile creature right in her eyes and testified against her, mentioning her abusive behavior towards me when she first came to live with us. She had nothing left to say after we had completely exposed her in front of everyone. Throughout the case, she made some of her friends start a campaign against our family, where they accused us of trying to abuse her because of the money that we had. But as the lies unraveled, fewer and fewer of her friends came to support her, and she had nothing. In the case of extortion, she got three months in jail, as well as three months of community service after she got out. Since she proved herself to be unfit parent, she lost all custody of little Lori. 
She's not stopped calling since she went to jail and dad has to block the calls. She claims to really love her daughter, but what mother punishes her daughter for stuff that she doesn't even know? As for my dad, it was clear that he committed tax fraud. My grandpa tried his best to help him, but it was not a simple case. He had to be punished no matter what. So, he was forced to pay not only the tax, but a massive fine. That coupled with embarrassment towards the company, that led him to being in some financial issues. But he's learned his lesson. I don't know or condone him trying to evade tax like that and refusing to come clean for so long. His actions are what gave Whitney more ammunition to hurt us, but he has promised to do better. Since Lori's living full-time with Dad, I've moved in as well. Grandpa's still here and he'll not leave until he's helped Dad sort this mess of company out. I'm just so glad that I told Grandpa. I can't imagine what would have happened if Grandpa had not been there. He went above and beyond for us, digging up useful dirt that we used to fight her. Now she's in jail and she has no one. She's become quite the leper and even her sister does not want to be associated with her. Not only that, but her boyfriend dumped her after realizing that she's broke. Well, let's just go ahead and state the obvious. I could not believe OP's father this entire time was such a floor mat, getting walked on by the stepmother. If it was not for the grandpa of this story... That wretched woman would have got away with everything. Guys, let me know exactly your thoughts about the grandpa, the father, OP, the stepmother. Heck, tell me about the whole story. I never knew my father. I heard he was up to some sketchy stuff, and my mother told me that he might return one day. Well, that's when my grandpa, which is my father's father, broke the news to me. My father is not a good man, and Grandpa's going to find him. He's going to hunt him down and make sure that he pays for all the child support he's missed over the years. My grandfather was pretty much forced to save our life pretty much by getting my father, his son, to pay child support and fix his mistakes. I never actually saw my dad, as at first, when I was really young, my mom told me that he had to travel somewhere and he was gone for years. So I figured that there was something else going on. When I got a little older, she told me that he actually left right when I was born and that he may not come back. This destroyed me mentally and growing up without a dad made some serious issues for me. The more I grew older, the more I cared less and less about having a father and cared more about our own deteriorating financial situation, since my mom was working minimum wage in a very tiring job in our town, like busting tables, and I was too young to get any money, so our life was very, very poor, and we barely had anyone except for my grandpa, who was my dad's father. Grandpa was completely different from my dad. He was a well-respected man in our town who gave us as much money as he could, even if it wasn't that much, he did what he had. The problem was my mom was always shy and embarrassed about talking to grandpa. She always feared that he was like his son, so we barely went to see him. And I didn't really get to spend any time with him. Still, he helped me when he could and my mom was always distrustful. The problem was that my dad wasn't paying any kind of child support as he divorced my mother right when I was born. We desperately needed that money, and the more I got older, the more we needed it even more. I was then 15, and things were getting worse and worse, and we would pretty much be forced to live homeless if I continued like this. So, I absolutely needed to find my father. The year was 1998, I knew I couldn't find him alone, and this was before any kind of social media or ease of technology, so... I went to the one man who could help me, my grandpa. I told him that I was sorry to put him in such a tough situation as I knew that he probably still loved his son. But he was always very fair and I knew that he would help me. I sat down with him and asked him to help us. He told me that he's sorry he couldn't do more with money but that his financial situation wasn't great to begin with and he did all that he could. 
I told him that I knew that, but he was the only one I could go to. I asked him how the whole thing started since my mom always refused to give me any details about my dad and what happened between them. Grandpa started by telling me how my mom and dad met in the first place. Apparently, dad was a few years older than mother, but my mom was still in college and they used to go to the same art exhibit every other week. My mom was young and beautiful, but my dad was pretty much a player. Grandpa told me that he used to get out with a lot of women and never settled down until he laid his eyes on my mother in that exhibit. They talked for a while about art and apparently they fell in love. But Grandpa thinks otherwise. When my dad told him about her, he only ever mentioned how beautiful she was and how fun she was and he never talked about anything else. Like her responsibility or her ability to even be a good wife. Because we do come from a smaller town. Early marriages were very common. Grandpa didn't approve of the marriage, not because of my mother, but because he knew my dad was reckless and just wanted her because she was young and beautiful. And that's all he cared about. Then my dad married my mom behind my grandpa's back forced her to leave college, and they traveled for a bit across the country. As my dad didn't really have one stable job, Grandpa tells me that ever since that moment, he had a big rift between him and Dad. And when my Grandpa tried to talk some sense into him, my dad told him that he was a foolish old man, that he didn't even care what he thought. Anyways, they were married for a couple years, and my grandpa didn't know anything until they moved back to the town because mother had fell pregnant. Grandpa tells me this was the only time where he felt somewhere close to his son. But that night before my birth, dad told him how scared he was and how he didn't want a kid and that he was very rude about it. Grandpa tried to talk to him about responsibility and apparently it was such a big fight between them that my grandpa kicked him out and threatened to disown him if he didn't raise me. Well, the next day I was born without my father in the hospital. He left without a trace in the wind. After Grandpa told me about the story, he told me that he would help me find him but that he didn't want me to come with him. I asked him why, but he did not give me a reason and just told me that this was the only way it should be done. We went back to my house and he told my mom and promised her that he would find him and make him pay all the child support owed. My mother had a moment of connection with Grandpa, thanked him, telling him that he was a better man than my father ever was. I didn't know what my Grandpa was doing until he found my father three months later. And my mom told me the whole story. Apparently, he started by traveling to another city where my dad had an apartment and searched everywhere for him. He didn't find him but found some traces like his friends or co-workers who told him that he moved around a lot and they had no idea where he actually lived. Grandpa went to the one person who may know exactly where dad went. Dad's mom, my grandmother, who was Grandpa's second wife, and apparently she was a horrible person to the point where Grandpa took my dad away from her when he was still a child, and left because she was a drug addict who put my dad in danger of the child. Grandpa went to visit her in an old people's home. And, well, it was also a rehab place where she stayed for the last few years recovering from her drug addiction, and just staying there because she was old and had nobody. Mom tells me that she didn't even remember him from how bad her memory was. But she could remember names and basic stuff like that, so he kept asking her about her son. And while she gave very, very vague, confused answers at first, she finally remembered both of them and broke down crying, telling him that she was sorry and that she didn't even know what she was doing. Grandpa really sympathized with her. Even if he hadn't seen her in like <laughs> 40 years. She begged him to stay with her, but he just wanted to know where dad was. She struggled to remember at first, but told him somebody came to visit her and left a phone number. 
Dad took the number and the area code and was a completely different city from there. So, he had to go on another little road trip. Before going over to Dad's new state, however, my grandpa recruited one of his dearest friends to help him. Apparently, Grandpa's friend was a retired CIA officer. So, he pretty much knew everything there is to know about finding someone. And he promised my grandpa to help him. They both traveled to that city, and even though they called a number a million times, the number never picked up. They were now on a new quest to find out where my father has gone. So, they spent days looking through phone books and stations, asking around, showing pictures, going through heck to find him until they came across another lead. They found someone who apparently knew him, and he told them exactly where he was living. So Grandpa and his friend went over there to investigate, and Mom tells me that they did find him. But the encounter was absolutely horrid. My dad looked very, very rough, and he screamed at his father, telling him that he never wanted to see him ever again, and asking him why did he come to find him in the first place. When my grandpa tried to talk to him, my dad wanted to kick both of them out, but they refused, so he called the police. Grandpa and his friend felt that it was pointless. They didn't really know what to do, so they left to go talk to him the next day. They stayed in their car all night on the stakeout waiting for him to leave anywhere, but he never showed. They went back into the building to ask about him, but... One person there told them that he left in the middle of the night and he had his bags with him. They were now forced to find him in another place. They asked everybody in the building if he ever mentioned anything about leaving and they told him that he was packing to go to Dallas, Texas for a couple of days. So they head over there to try to find him before he runs away again. On their road trip to Texas, one of Grandpa's friend's contacts called him and told him that my father had a long list of felonies and was wanted, missing court dates, and they figured that he was running away and moving so often. Pretty much everyone was on his tail, and he was going to prison either way when he gets caught. But they had to find him first. In Texas, it was the exact same as before. They kept asking around until miraculously found him in the same motel that they were staying at. The place wasn't his property this time, so he couldn't threaten them with the police and just forced themselves into his room to talk to him. Grandpa kept asking him why he was running and why he left in the first place, but Dad got aggressive, tried to fight them. My grandpa's dad held him down, beat him up, and broke two of his ribs. My dad was no match for him, and my grandpa was too disappointed and angry about his son to stop it. Grandpa literally threatened my dad that if he did not go back to town, kiss my mother's feet, and start paying that dang child support, he would literally have his friend cut off my dad's fingers. Dad's friend was already on the phone and made arrangements for my father to drive back to our town. And my grandpa told him that he would make an example out of him in front of everybody, since everybody in town loved and respected him. Three months passed since I talked to my grandpa, and I pretty much lost hope in finding my dad. We were barely getting by, and I just stopped caring. Way later, when we did get the child support money, and my grandpa came back and passed away, my mom sat me down and told me the rest of the story. She told me that my grandpa, his friend, and dad did get back to the town one day super late at night while I was asleep and nobody woke me up to tell me anything. My mom and the whole town went outside, and my grandpa made an example of my father in front of everybody he knew eh, about how he was a failure. The town laughed at my father, even his friends knew from school. My dad finally agreed to pay most of the child support money, and he did. The next day, however, my dad disappeared again, probably because of all the illegal activity he had done and the cases he was involved in. That might have been the last opportunity I had to see my father. But mother insisted that it was better for me to never see him. 
Mom continued the story. However, she told me that after getting the child support money, we managed to pay all of our debt. And things did become much better. Before my grandpa passed away, we got much closer to him and things were really starting to look up. My mom told me that the night my dad disappeared again, my grandpa sat her down and told her the reason my dad left in the first place, as she never knew and just thought that he stopped caring. He told her that because his mom never raised him, grandpa struggled with his son, and his son grew up to have this complex towards women, where he only saw them as temporary pleasures and that he had this actual issue towards feeling affection for anybody and commitment because he didn't have his mother. My mom told me that for a single moment, she felt bad for my dad, but that it did not excuse what he's done. My grandpa did not pass away in the town, however, because he left right after dad left again, and I don't know anything until my mom told me. She told me that he left the town to go back to his ex-wife, and that the time he spent with her when he was looking for my dad, he struck feelings that he hadn't felt in forever, and he went back to her old peoples to come to try to reconnect and take care of her, as she was now clear of the drugs. Mom told me that Grandpa took her out of the home and that they went back together, since they never really officially divorced anyways, and lived together for a couple years before he passed. Mom was telling me this whole story on the day Grandpa's will was supposed to be distributed. We attended the reading of his will, and it was the biggest surprise I've ever heard. Grandpa left literally everything he had to my mother, including his house and all his belongings. The lawyer told us that he also left us this rare collection of antiques that he had. He had no idea how valuable they were. The lawyer tells us the antiques who Grandpa thought was junk were appraised at over $500,000. We couldn't believe how things turned in an instant like that. Grandpa really was there for us at the end, even if he didn't know it. The most notable thing, however, was that he didn't leave a single dime for his son. I don't know if my dad would even know of his father or anything about the inheritance, but apparently he did and he called my mom to talk to her about it. Mom told me that dad called her to ask how she got grandpa to leave everything to her. He told her that she was selfish and a horrible person for taking all of dad's money and assets and leaving nothing for him, and that he needed the money to pay off debts and the illegal stuff he was involved in. My mother told him that she had not seen him in 16 years and snapped on the phone. She told him that he was a spineless coward who didn't care about anything or anybody other than himself and dragged him for leaving us all those years ago. She told him that she was glad he was never part of my life because she didn't want me to end up just like him. Things got a little heated and she eventually threatened to call the police on him because he was already on the run away from the authorities. After their call, I literally never heard anything else about my dad in my entire life. My mom and I lived our life comfortably together for years and we had a great time. Even though it was just me and her without my gramps, we made it work and even went to visit grandma and give our condolences for gramps. She was doing much better and looked to be in a great place in her life. She told us crazy stories about her old life and the whole drug problem. But that year she spent with Grandpa was worth everything she suffered for. In the end, I was glad I didn't know or see my father because I didn't know how I would have handled seeing him or if he would have even been a bad influence. I don't even know what happened to him with the whole lawsuits against him and whatnot, but he seemed to still be on the run. I don't even know where to start with this story. Let's just go ahead and say, if it was not for the grandfather of this story, I don't know what would have happened. It was clear that OP's father was not a good guy. He did not care about his kid, his ex-wife or wife, did not care at all. If it wasn't for the grandpa coming in to basically save the day and leaving that huge inheritance for OP, 
Like I said, I don't know what would have happened, and can you believe the nerve of OP's father to go and ask for some of the inheritance after not even being in either one of their lives for over a decade? Anyways, guys, let me know your thoughts about that story and what you would have done. We still have one more story to look at, and man, it's a wild one. The title is The Trophy Husband. And basically, it's about a story of a younger guy who marries an old, rich, successful woman, only to be found out that, oh man, he's made the biggest mistake of his life. I-36 male was just a simple barista whose life changed forever. I was always pretty down on my luck and not really the best when it comes to anything. I didn't go to college and didn't really have dreams of an amazing career. I barely got through school. My parents told me that I had to leave home, and I was pretty much on my own from then on. I didn't know what to do or what I actually wanted to do, so I did pretty much nothing. I moved out of my parents' place when I was 18 years of age and have been living in a rental apartment ever since. I had a roommate for a few years, but in the last two years, I've been living on my own, which is actually my greatest achievement thus far. I work as a barista in a local coffee shop and that's pretty much the best I could ever do after flipping burgers and cleaning dishes for a few years. I didn't hate my job as I found making coffee strangely relaxing and I liked the conversation with the people. Most people come in the morning and I always find interesting examples of different careers and everyone sitting down to work or make business calls or even heck send an email. I wanted to be one of those people oh so badly, but I knew there was no way to do that. About a year ago, a very sharply dressed woman started coming to the coffee shop every morning, sharp. She looked a bit older than me, perhaps early 40s, but she seemed like a pretty important person. She was always on business calls or meetings and seemed to be a manager or director of some sort. She always seemed tired or just too bothered, but she was always very nice and always smiled and we always held a little good conversation. The more she came, the more we talked, while I made her coffee and the more we just connected. We vibed. Over time, she became my favorite customer and we always talked a lot. She starts telling me about how she was the CEO of a company and that she always had issues with her work. She told me that she thinks nobody in the company likes her and that she always has trust issues with the managers and employees. She seemed to be actually pretty lonely and just wanted to have a conversation with somebody, a stranger. I always tried my best to be nice to her and she seemed to really appreciate it. Over time, she starts trusting me more and more, and I even found out her using me as sort of a therapy session to tell me about cathartic experiences and to complain about her life or whatnot. She thought that telling me what goes on will not make a difference since I'm so away from all the business, but that it would make things easier on her to vent. I didn't think much of it, but she later started asking me if I went to college or if I was good at anything business related. I told her not really, but that I had a sharp mind and that I could solve problems, oh yeah, but that I was just still a simple barista. She seemed to want to offer me a job at the company, which I, uh, really appreciated, but I didn't know if I was anywhere near qualified for something like that. She always kept asking me questions about what or what not I could do, and three months later, I found myself learning so much about management from her that I was literally taking down side notes during my shift. She starts teaching me privately about all the stuff, and out of kindness or trust, got me a good managerial position at her company. Shifting from the coffee shop to a big boy company was a very big one. And I didn't know exactly how to adapt, but over time I did. She was with me every step of the way, and every time I asked her why she gave me the job, she just told me that she felt I was trustworthy and a good person, deep down. And that was what she was looking for. Not academics or skills. <laughs> they can be taught. 
I bought into it, and she starts taking me to the conferences and training, all the important get-togethers. I was still living alone in my apartment, but I had to splurge a little bit on suits and shoes. As expected, eventually, we got close enough that we got married. Yeah. My friends used to joke that I married a woman older and richer and more powerful, but I saw no wrong in it. I thought it was just fate. But a lot of men had that mentality that I'm now inferior to her and that she could control all aspects of my life, and I didn't see it that way, but I would soon be proven wrong. I moved in with her and to her massive house. Of course, as we wouldn't live in my tiny apartment. Whatever stuff I had left in my apartment and found that the house was fully furnished and I had a lot of stuff just waiting for me there anyways. I didn't mind it, but it did seem like a bit too much. I moved in and we lived together and everything was peachy at first. We both showed up to work every day together. I was in charge of my department, so I had total freedom there. Wow, she was in the top offices. Everyone in the company seemed to be talking, but whenever I tried to be friendly with the other employees, they always seemed to be shy. I soon realized that I could not have this kind of friendly relationship with them and that we had to keep it very professional. I had to be their distant boss, even though I really didn't want to. I didn't feel the power and class difference between us at all, except for times when she interfered into my department to take decisions on my behalf. For example, one time I've given an excuse for a group to leave, but when she found out she overruled my decision while I was standing next to her. And when I tried to speak, she gave me this stern look as if I was her employee. I didn't like that at all. And it made me look small in front of my team, and when I confronted her about it, she joked that it was a force of habit. Well, this wasn't the only time. As she continuously kept opposing me on several points, and the employees eventually went to her directly, as a way to stick up to me like a kid getting permission from father after mom said no. It drove me crazy sometimes, and every time I brought it up to her, she just brushed it off and joked about it which made it me even angrier. I'd started realizing what my friends used to joke about who were wearing the pants in the relationship, but I didn't want to obsess over it just yet. There were some points, though, that I didn't like, and any time I tried to discuss it with her, she would just wave it off as if it was trivial. And yeah, guys, she never cooked. So, anytime I asked her to cook something or that I wanted to try her cooking, she would just look at me in this ridiculing way and passive-aggressive. One time, I commented that she was dressed inappropriately, and she told me that it was none of my business. She made a whole scene out of it, and when I told her that I was still her husband, she told me to remember that we were living in her house and that I was working in her company, it was a big fight, and my dignity almost had me leave the house and the company right then and there. But she later apologized, and we went on a vacation just to forget all the tension. Even on vacation, though, she starts taking all the decisions about where to go, what to do, what to eat. <laughs> I started joking that giving my opinion would be inappropriate. But she told me that I was just being ridiculous the whole trip. I didn't get one say about a detail, which kind of drove me nuts. I was forced to do activities and restaurants I didn't even like, just because she thought that it was the best course of action. When we got back from said vacation, I confronted her about this, and she told me this was her bad. She told me that because she's always just used to taking all the decisions in life and being put in the leadership role, it starts to rub off on her, and that she never actually means it. I understood, but I wasn't ready for what came next. All of a sudden, my wife starts becoming extremely controlling. I had a good friend of mine who used to be my roomie. Anytime I told her that I was going out with him, she would come up with some excuse that I couldn't leave and had to help her with something. 
So I kept canceling on my friend and he got so upset. But my wife seemed to be doing this intentionally when I confront her about this and asked her why she keeps blocking me from going out with my buddy. She told me that she did not trust him and that he was out for our money. I told her that's absolutely ridiculous, but she told me that I never even went out with him again. We would get a divorce. It was beyond extreme, and I had no idea why she would think he was so bad, so it took me a while to see him again. Another time, I was going out at 8 p.m., and she went on this rant about how I'm going out too late, that she needs me around, and that I never help her with anything. She gaslighted me into thinking that I was wrong for going out after 6 p.m. and made me apologize and feel guilty. She tells me that I should not go out at that time again. She had that way of being pushy while being delicate but very strangely authoritarian at the same time. Anytime I remembered that I was the one living in her house, I felt a bit awkward and didn't want to say anything. Over time, this got way worse. She starts becoming more and more demanding and whenever we went out with the elite of her social group, she would treat me less like a husband and more like a valet or servant. She always laughed off her behavior with me on how she belittled me in front of everyone. A simple example of this would be us sitting down with a bunch of her executives or rich people and because of me being quiet... She would tell me to go park the car or do something useful instead of sitting quietly like this. People would laugh at it, at the way she treated me, and it makes me so angry that I decided I simply didn't want this life anymore. Her dominating obsession became worse, even in bed. At one point, she told me that I did not need to go to the office anymore and that they've hired somebody new. She didn't even tell me that she was taking my job away, but she told me that now I had time to stay home and take care of things until she came back. I was relegated to a housekeeper at that point. I wanted out. One night, I told her that I want a divorce, and she laughed. She reminded me that I've signed a bunch of contracts and prenups with her, and that even if I fancied a divorce, she would legally bury me. She told me that I needed to remember who I was and stay in my place. She degraded me for being a barista that she took from the streets and made something out of. She absolutely humiliated me in front of her assistant who was on a Zoom meeting with her and told me that it was her fault she took pity on somebody like me. The next day, she went to work and I literally snuck out of the house Guys, I felt imprisoned in it, so I went back to my old apartment and called my friend over to help me think about what I should do. I told them that she's been absolutely losing her mind, and that she was treating me more like a house pet. My friend, the one she really didn't like, came clean and told me the reason she didn't like him is that he used to work for her and she fired him. He told me that he didn't want to tell me the whole time so as not to make things awkward, but he told me that she has a ton of dirty business and that 99% of her employees don't like her. I thought about digging up some of her dirty laundry. So, I went straight to the source. The employees. I secretly emailed and sat down with so many of my company staff and they told me the most ridiculous stories. They told me how she abused them, cut their paychecks for no reason, gave them completely unfair work conditions, and constantly pushed them over the smallest little things. The employees gave me a long list of completely unethical things that she's done to employees, like keeping them in the office over time and preventing them from going to a parent's funeral, neglecting medical insurance, covering up a ton of workplace accidents that led to a major damage, and even paying off officials. So no lawsuits went through. And so much worse. One employee told me that one of the accountants got so stressed from covering up the dirty money to the point that he actually just hurt himself. Apparently, the company had a long list of covering up accidents and reports and paying bribes. 
In my investigation with a bunch of employees, one of the supervisors contacted me and told me that he needs to talk to me privately. It's a very important matter. He tells me some stuff I wouldn't believe. He told me that he's been married to my wife once and that she absolutely destroyed his life. He told me how she became so obsessive and controlling to the point where she threatened to have him imprisoned if he didn't do exactly what she told him to do. And she only kept him around the company out of spite because he hated the job and she had him in a tight contract grip. Once I finished with the employees, next on my list was the house staff and maids. I stayed at her house in the morning for a couple of days to gather up evidence. I talked to the maids and the chef and they told me some more heinous acts. The maids told me that she treats them horribly and that she once threatened one of them that she would have her deported. She was Mexican. Apparently, there used to be one maid who made her angry once and kept arguing with her loudly in front of her father, my father-in-law, and then they never heard from that maid again. Nobody knows what happened to her. They also told me stories about their family members dying and her refusing to let them go see them or going to the hospital or funeral or, or anything. She seemed to have this legal hold on everyone and the contracts she have people sign are riddled with loopholes. I can't even imagine what she could do to me with the work contract and prenups I didn't even read. I knew the one person who could stop her. Her father. The thing about her dad is that he lived abroad, but she's absolutely terrified of him. He was the one who founded the company and entrusted her with it, but he didn't really trust her. Pretty much everything she has is his, including the house, and he's extremely strict kind who's even more controlling than she is. He never lets go of a mistake, and she complained about him an absolute million times, so he was my one guy left. I got in contact with the guy and told him that his daughter had been messing up the company and at home and that there are major crises at hand. It took him a few days to get back to me, but when he emailed me back, I told him some more details about what I knew and he literally didn't even reply after that. It took a couple days. I found him at our doorstep. As soon as my wife saw him, she shivered in her boots. He got in, didn't say hi, stood in front of both of us telling me to start telling him what I know. She was confused, didn't know what was going on, but I start going off on everything she's done to me, to the company, to the house staff. As I was going, I could see her soul escaping her body. I witnessed it out of fear, and he just stared at her silently, intimidatingly. Once I finished presenting my evidence, there was a moment of silence before he thanked me apologized for the house staff and went to town. He yelled so loudly and violently at her that she broke down in tears. He said the most hurtful things about her being a disappointment and that he always wanted a boy. He told her he only left her all this so that she would shut up and he could stay away from her. He basically told her how much he despised her and how she only brought him headaches and troubles. In the end, he cut her off from everything. He told her that she's no longer the CEO of the company and that he was cutting her off from the trust fund and most of the family money. I watched her fall to her knees on the floor, begging both him and me, but we would not be convinced. I told her how she gaslit me, made me feel lonely and afraid of legal consequences from my own lover and that I didn't want her to even do any of this. I told her I was happy being a barista, and I wish I've never made her that dang cup of coffee. What blows me away about this entire story is the fact that the trophy wife, or OP's wife, she did not even own the stuff. She was not the owner of the business. She didn't even own the house that they lived in. But yet, she had so much entitlement in her, you would think that she was the ruler of the universe. And she learned swiftly after her father got ear how she's been misbehaving, how everything can come crumbling down. So now we end in the predicament of the end of the story, and we know exactly how it just played out. 
Guys, I have one question for you. If you were OP of the story and you were in his position, how would you go about getting away from this woman? Would you contact her father like OP did or would you do something more drastic? Let me know your thoughts. Drop them down below. If you're new to the channel, my name's Mr. Redito. I read stories every single day. Some of the most dramatic stories I can find on the World Wide Web. If you're into that, go ahead and subscribe to the channel and I hope you have an amazing day and I will catch you guys in the next one.